What's hiding inside Coca-Cola cans and regular household batteries? Why do magnets affect breakfast cereals? Do crosswalk buttons actually work, or are they just useless decorations? What does that USB symbol really mean? I'm not sure I know the answers to these and similar questions, but I'm eager to learn the truth together with you. Let's find it out. Coca-Cola cans have a secret few people know about. Here's a Coke can. Let's submerge it in a highly corrosive alkaline solution. The aluminum dissolves due to a process known as hydrolysis, and we can see a plastic liner inside the can. It's made from a polymer or epoxy resin and serves as some kind of a protective barrier between the aluminum walls of the can and the rather acidic soda. Despite a popular myth, household batteries don't actually contain liquid, and if you accidentally cut them open, no toxic liquid will spill. Most of them are dry cell batteries, which are made of electrochemical cells. Those convert chemical energy into electrical energy. Larger batteries often house numerous small cells within them, too. Even Tesla vehicle batteries consist of multiple small cells. When combined, they easily provide the necessary voltage. Most toothbrushes have differently colored bristles, but they aren't just pleasing to the eye. Those bristles, often blue, have a functional purpose. They're called toothbrush indicators, and their colors fade as you use the brush. The American Dental Association recommends changing your toothbrush at least four times a year. And by getting paler, these bristles help you figure out when it's time to replace your toothbrush. You'll probably agree that there's no better snack than a pack of chips. Some are flat, others have ridges. Is it just aesthetics? Not really. The main purpose of those lines on some kinds of chips is to help with the distribution of spices and seasonings. In other words, all those substances that make your chips taste like cheese are mostly stored inside the lines. Plus, the lines make chips crunchier. Now this one might be a surprise, but some breakfast cereals are magnetic. That's because they're often fortified with iron in the form of a fine powder. Due to the added iron, cereal flakes get attracted to magnets. All this may sound kinda alarming, but in reality, the iron content in the flakes is minimal and doesn't pose any threat to your health. That clear fluid in gel pens is called the ink follower or stopper fluid. The gel in such pens contains pigment particles dissolved in a polymer solution. The main task of the stopper fluid is to be a barrier to prevent the gel from evaporating or leaking out. Without this transparent fluid, your gel pen wouldn't function. The fluid always stays in one position and doesn't get dissolved with the gel. Neither does it move backwards or flow out of the pen. Many pedestrian crosswalk buttons, namely in New York, are placebo buttons. They do literally nothing when you press them. Originally, they were functional after being introduced in 1964, but today, most of them don't affect traffic lights, which are programmed based on the real needs of the traffic flow. Why do such buttons even exist then? It's a simple psychological trick, providing you with an illusion of control. You might have noticed that movie theater seats are almost always red. This choice isn't random. It has strategic importance, which is rooted in visual science. The thing is, red light has a longer wavelength. It means that it's the first color to disappear in low light. It allows the audience to concentrate better on the screen once the movie begins. Such a design choice enhances the viewing experience by minimizing distractions. Speed bumps are crucial for pedestrian safety. But at the same time, they can seriously increase car emissions due to the non-stop acceleration and deceleration they cause. To address this issue, some cities like London are testing fake speed bumps. Those are optical illusions painted on the road. They look raised from a driver's perspective, but in reality, they're flat. Authorities hope that this approach will slow down drivers without having a negative impact on the environment. Soda bottles are always filled in such a way that there's some space between the liquid and the cap. That's because soda contains carbon dioxide. It's a gas that can expand once the bottle's heated. If there's no gap in the bottle, it can break because of the pressure building inside. Also, when you open your drink, the gases go out in the form of bubbles, making the drink overflow. The gap helps with this problem too. 
The USB symbol, looking like a trident, has always sparked multiple speculations about its origin. One popular idea is that it represents Neptune's trident and symbolizes power and adaptability. But there's also a little bit less exciting theory. A man who claimed to have designed the symbol in the 1980s stated that it was supposed to represent connectivity. The large circle symbolizes a computer, while the attached shapes, the circle, the triangle, and square, stand for different outputs. The design of a tennis racket has a specific feature known as the throat. It's an open space below the head of the racket. This space isn't just for storing balls, it also improves the racket's aerodynamics by letting air pass through. It seriously reduces drag during swings. Speaking of tennis, tennis courts are usually built with a north-south orientation. It helps minimize the impact of the sun's position during the game, ensuring that neither player has the sun directly in their eyes. Look closely at a tram's overhead lines, and you'll see that its contact wires zigzag back and forth instead of going in a straight line. That's because all trams have pantographs attached to their roofs. The upper part of the pantograph is gradually worn down by the overhead wire and eventually needs to be replaced. To wear it down evenly, the wire is not installed strictly along the tram's path, but in zigzag patterns. As the tram moves, the pantograph slides along the wire, and it wears down evenly. Those cone-shaped water cooler cups? Their shape is intentionally designed to prevent users from setting the cups down. This allows employees to minimize the risk of spilling water on their desks around various electronic devices. Plus, less material is used to produce cone-shaped cups, which makes the process less wasteful and more cost-effective. It also kind of supports sustainability by encouraging people to drink their water quickly and dispose of their cups immediately after. Most suitcases have two zipper pulls, and it serves several purposes. First of all, if one zipper fails, the other can keep the suitcase closed. Even better, having two zippers allows you to have easier access to small sections of your suitcase without having to open it entirely. And finally, when you have two zippers, you can connect them with a padlock for increased security. Some plastic milk containers have dents on their sides. These dents serve several purposes. When milk spoils, it usually causes swelling and high-pressure buildup inside the container. That's when the dent pops out and doesn't let the jug blow up. Plus, if you decide to freeze the milk, it will expand like any other fluid. And then again, the indentation will pop out and prevent the container from breaking inside your freezer. If you ever had a problem figuring out why fake pockets exist, you need to hear this. The main reason is that if a clothing item has a specific cut or shape, pockets may spoil it. They can alter the item's shape either in the warehouse or already on the retail rack. The solution? Getting rid of the pockets in key areas. Plus, fake pockets are obviously cheaper, and they don't get stretched out. The thermos wasn't actually invented to keep your coffee warm. It was made by a Scottish scientist who wanted a safe place to keep his chemicals at a stable temperature. So, he took two bottles, put the smaller one inside the bigger bottle, and vacuumed out the air between them. Go check your box of aluminum foil. Does it have push-in tabs on the sides? They're there to keep the roll in place as you pull some foil out. Now flip a stapler upside down. See the metal plate on the bottom? You can turn it to get temporary staples, ones whose pins are bent outward and are easier to take out. Speaking of flipping stuff, do it with a salt jar. Nah, you should have closed the lid first. Now you've got salt all over the place. Okay, now you've done it. Look at the bottom of the jar. See the ribs on it? If you take another jar, say with pepper in it, and rub the bottoms of the two jars against each other, the salt will pour out evenly without you having to shake it vigorously. Same works with pepper, too. It wasn't their original purpose, but you can use soda can tabs to hang hangers on other hangers. By the way, the hole in the tab is there to put straws through and keep them in place. Post-it notes are supposed to be peeled off from the side like you're turning the page in a book. 
most of us tear them from the bottom, and that just creates a crease and makes the whole note less sticky. The hole in your spaghetti spoon helps you measure the perfect portion. It's just enough for one person. Multiply that by however many people you're serving. Or maybe you just like to pig out on pasta. Hey, I'm not judgmental. Does the audio jack in your headphones have one, two, or three stripes? One band means your headphones just play sound, two means stereo sound, and three mean the headphones also have a microphone. To prevent water from boiling over, just lay a wooden spoon across the rim of the pot. It only works for a little while, though. If the spoon's surface gets heated up to boiling point, the bubbles will just foam up and around it. That's why metal spoons won't do. They heat up too quickly. Silica gel packets can absorb up to 50% of the humidity in a confined space, so use them around the house. Tape one to the lid of a container of dry goods, be it dog treats, breadcrumbs, cookies, you name it. Throw one in each of your dresser drawers. Just make sure they don't get accidentally eaten. Most people use bobby pins upside down. The zigzag part goes closer to your scalp. The texture keeps the hair and pin in place much better. Bubble wrap was originally created as wallpaper that would be easy to clean. But the decor idea didn't take off, so they found a new use for it. Now they help cushion items during shipping. And they pop so nicely, of course. Hey, just ask my dog! All crackers and some cookies have holes to make sure the final product has the right texture. These teeny tiny holes allow steam to escape, so your crackers and cookies wouldn't snap. If it weren't for these holes, also known as dockers, steam would build up inside the tree. And the final result might have been scrumptious, but it would have been rather oddly shaped. The scalloped edges on Ritz crackers are there so you can roll the cracker over your cheese so that you get the perfect size piece to sit on top. It works for softish cheese only. Don't try to cut some Parmesan like this. Cheesily speaking, <laughs> you probably grate your cheese with a cutting board or a plate underneath the box grating. Try a more convenient method. Flip the box grater and lie it on the side. This way, you get the finest shreds of cheese and it's mess-free. PVA glue doesn't stick inside the bottle because it contains long molecules, such as polymers and water. Once you squeeze the glue out, the water trapped inside evaporates, leaving only sticky polymers. Super glue doesn't stick inside the bottle because of a special chemical that hardens when it hits water vapor. So the glue doesn't stick because the container keeps water out. The bread goes stale just because it loses moisture. When you add water to the flour, it changes texture, and the starch molecules get pretty disorganized. Hey, I can relate. That's why bread is soft and fluffy when it's freshly made. But the more it cools down, the more water it loses. Starch molecules get their original crystallized state back. Also, recrystallization happens way faster in the fridge. The sole of your sneakers, and even the tires of your car, are just one huge molecule. It's because when rubber is vulcanized, all the molecules become connected through the sulfur. So they turn into one, but a really large molecule. Your jeans are blue on the outside and white on the inside because of a smart way to weave the fabric. The warp thread is dyed, while the weft thread has no color, it's just white. This way, manufacturers reduce the amount of dye needed for each piece of clothing. By the way, most jeans are blue because they were originally dyed with indigo dye with a rich blue tint. This dye was picked for the way it interacted with cotton. When the cotton is heated, most dyes just penetrate it, but indigo dye stays attached to the surface. As a result, each time people wash their jeans, the dye molecules escape the fabric, leaving a unique pattern on each garment. Today, manufacturers use synthetic indigo dye. Bananas have thick skin to keep insects away. However, it gets thinner as the fruit ripens. Once the banana is ripe, it starts getting water from its skin. Birds and animals can also tear the thin skin easily. Hey, smart move, Mother Nature! The public toilets tend to be U-shaped for hygienic reasons. This way, anyone who wants to use it is less likely to get in contact with ceramic, normally swarming with germs. The bottled water has an expiration date. However, the water itself doesn't go bad. The problem is about the bottle. The plastic starts releasing chemicals over time, so the water gets contaminated. You can't drink it anymore. 
Glass bottled water has an almost indefinite shelf life. Still, some criteria, as changes in room temperature, may lead to a slow increase of bacteria in water, so it might go bad too. If all else fails, try drinking it from the faucet. Who would have thought? Fresh water. In-flight food is way saltier and spicier than back on land. Airlines have to give an extra kick to all the dishes due to in-cabin conditions. The combination of dry air and changed pressure changes how we perceive taste. Also, the taste isn't only about taste buds. It's about 80% smell. But as odor receptors don't work the way they should because of dry cabin air, well, without some extra seasoning, the food would have been almost completely tasteless. And yes, I've been known to be completely tasteless myself. Veins appear blue because they're under our skin, and skin scatters more blue light than red. Also, the skin around the veins looks even redder than the veins, enhancing the contrast, and the veins appear even bluer. However, it's just an illusion. Our blood is always red. Trust me. Supermarket tomatoes look tremendous, but taste bland because, for the past 70 years, farmers have opted for fruits that ripen more evenly and look better and more pleasing to customers. Wild tomatoes are dark green and don't ripen evenly. Still, the tomatoes the farmers grow have a teeny tiny mutation in one gene. That's why they're evenly colored but can't produce chloroplast properly. It changes the whole photosynthesis process, leaving the evenly colored tomatoes with less sugar in their tissues. As a result, these tomatoes tend to taste like cardboard. The moral to the story appears to be, go get some ugly tomatoes. Or tomatoes. The space below, a cup of noodles, is there to protect the noodles during transport. This technique is called a middle suspension. This way, they're protected better in their styrofoam cup, and it also helps those noodles soften more evenly and quickly. Now, chewing gum wasn't invented for keeping your breath fresh. It was supposed to be a replacement for rubber. But the rubber experiment failed, giving opportunity to a modern version of chewing gum. Sandwiches have all their filling in between two slices of bread to keep the hands clean. Well, at least it was so when the first sandwich was invented. Some centuries ago, I wasn't around then, the fourth Earl of Sandwich, John Montague, asked his chef to cook him something yummy he could eat without interrupting his long binge. The chef, I think he was named Pastrami or something, wrapped meat and all the other ingredients in the bread to make the dish greaseproof. And finally, all the ingredients in margarita pizza stand for one of the colors in the Italian flag. Basil represents the green stripe, mozzarella represents the white one, and tomatoes, or tomatoes, represent the red stripe. And if you want it tastier, use ugly tomatoes. Pouring milk into your tea or coffee can make a mess if you don't do it the right way. If you want to pour it with the opening closer to the cup, stop right there, turn it to the other side, and then pour. The flow will be much smoother this way, and you won't have to deal with wiping the table afterwards. Hey, I'm bossy, get over it. <laughs> it's all about the physics of it. If you turn the carton's opening toward the cup, and the carton is full, while the milk's escaping through the opening, the air from the outside will try to get inside the carton to fill the empty space. Since there's only one place where it can do that, the air will push the milk back and disrupt the flow. When you turn the carton to the other side, there will be empty space along with the top side of the carton, and the air will have it easier getting inside. So the flow will be steady, and you won't have that annoying spurting anymore. Now, the handrails are usually moving faster than the escalator itself, because the gear wheels that drive the handrails are intentionally made a bit larger than required. The rubber on those wheels tends to wear off with time, so if the handrails are moving at the same speed as the steps, or even slower, then you're riding a rather old escalator. Now speaking of escalators, and I was, at subway stations with three or more of them, the majority will be going in a different direction depending on the time of day. For example, in the city center, there will be two or more escalators going up in the morning and down in the evening, and vice versa at the outskirts. This is done to make it easier for passengers to get around. Most people only work downtown while living far from the center. So they go to work in the morning and find more escalators moving in the direction they need. 
how convenient. If you were ever worried about how the pilots find their way in the dark when landing at night, well, you can rest easy now. There's an incredibly complex illumination system on the ground that helps the crew navigate the airplane. And it's not just the red and white lights along the runway. The lights actually start popping up long before the runway, so that the pilots can easily find their way. And different patterns mean different things, which your captain and their co-pilot know by heart. Every commercial airplane you've been on has only one wing. The first airplanes were called biplanes because they had two wings, one on the top and the other going through the bottom of the fuselage. They were connected with struts and wires, which made kind of a box that basically allowed the craft not to fall apart in the air. How thoughtful. It was necessary at lower speeds than earlier planes could only muster, but as the engines increased in power, The second wing became redundant and repetitive. The single wing still serves as a support for the whole structure, though. Going 100 miles an hour on an interstate makes you feel the drive and excitement of speed. Flying at nearly 600 miles per hour makes you drowsy at best. This is because you don't feel the actual speed of anything. You can only see how fast you're moving relative to other objects. The closer, the faster. In a car, everything's close to you. So you see trees, people, houses, witches, porcupines, and other cars zapping past you. On board a plane, everything's so far away that it seems to go at a snail's pace. Now, take a good look at your smartphone. It might never have occurred to you, but its rectangular shape is no accident. And it's actually what you want it to be. Rectangle is the most convenient shape for a screen. It has an orientation, so you can flip your phone all you want and it will adapt. Imagine that with, say, a round-shaped display, you'd have to always turn it in your hands until the top is where it belongs. Next, it fits into your pocket nice and cozy. The pocket is deeper than it is wide, so a phone longer than it is broad will sit there perfectly. A square or circular phone will be more of an inconvenience. Then again, a rectangle is much easier to handle. It fits in your palm, and it feels better than a circle or a square. And finally, we're used to having rectangular things all around us. Pictures, sheets of paper, books, SpongeBob, photographs. Having round-shaped screens would have been just weird. Still, there have been attempts to create circular and square smartphones, but as you can guess, they didn't catch on. Taking photos in the dark with a flash, you must have noticed your smartphone flashes several times before making the actual shot. Remember those horrid red eyes in old photographs made on film or digital cameras? That happened exactly because the camera flashed only once. In the dark, the pupils of your eyes become larger, trying to catch more light to see better. And when they reflect the camera's flash, the red eye effect appears. With smartphones, the first short flash makes the pupils contract from bright light, and only then the device takes a shot, and you don't resemble a horror movie creature anymore. There are two main reasons why there are no public bathrooms in the subway. Safety and financing. They're ridiculously expensive to maintain, so I guess we won't be seeing many of such cabins where they weren't before. And the second reason is security concern. Since there can be no cameras installed in the bathroom, and any kind of suspicious activity would go unnoticed. It seems only natural that a vehicle that carries so much more people than a car should have seatbelts. But buses have none, even school ones. In fact, it has to do with several things at once. First of all, in case of emergency, passengers need to get off a bus as fast as possible. With seatbelts on, they'll waste precious time on unbuckling them. Secondly, a bus is a big and heavy vehicle. On the road, there are not many other members of the traffic that weigh more than a public bus. So in case of a collision, a bus would stop much slower than a car. And even though its passengers will certainly feel the impact, they normally won't get hurt as much. That's also the reason why passengers are allowed to ride standing, too. If your hotel has card keys with magnetic strips, Make sure you put your card key apart from your cell phone and wallet. The problem is that card keys are rewritten quite a lot, and they're designed for that process to be quick and easy. 
So, a fairly strong magnet like the one in your cell phone can erase your key card, and you won't be able to get back inside your room. The hotel will surely provide you with a new card, but that's still inconvenient. If you're struggling to get your taco shells to stay in place, use a muffin tray. Flip the tray upside down, spray it with oil, and place your tortillas in the gap. Cook them for around 10 minutes at 700 degrees for the perfect crispy taco shell. Mm, now I'm getting hungry. You? Looking for a lost earring or pin on the floor? Place a stocking over the end of your vacuum and move it over the floor. The small object will get picked up without getting vacuumed. It helps to turn the vacuum on while attempting this. Candle wax that's been spilled on furniture can be removed with ice cubes. Rather than ruining the finish by trying to scrape it off, fill a plastic bag with ice and let it sit on the wax for a few minutes. The wax will then cool and harden, making it much easier to pick off. Crayon marks on the walls are a parent's worst nightmare, but you can use a hairdryer to get them off. Heat the marks for just a few seconds to soften the wax, and then you should be able to just wipe it away. You can use hair conditioner to make that new wool sweater less itchy. Just soak it in lukewarm water with a couple of tablespoons of conditioner and leave it for 15 minutes. Then just dry it and your sweater will be much softer. That layer of bubbles that forms when you add bubble bath to your tub isn't just for fun. The bubbly layer also acts as insulation and keeps your bath warmer for longer. Next time you're getting ready for work, take a closer look at your go-to shirt. Every buttonhole is stitched vertically. But check out the very last hole. It's stitched horizontally, right? This is because the bottom part of your shirt endures the most stress from pulling, as it's where your hips are. So that horizontal buttonhole isn't a mistake. It's put there to stop your shirt ripping as your hips move. Hey, those hips don't lie. That random diamond on your backpack is called a lash tab or pig snap. It's there so you can thread cords through the holes to carry extra gear. Perfect for camping or long hikes. If you put your Chinese takeout on a plate when it arrives, you're doing more work than you should. Much like the paper condiment pots in fast food restaurants, your cardboard Chinese takeout box can be unfolded to create the perfect size plate for your food. That hole in your hollow lollipop stick isn't to prevent choking should it ever be swallowed. It's actually there to keep the candy in place. Excess candy flows into the hollow tube and the hole, which, when it hardens, keeps the pop in place. If it was a smooth stick, the candy would slide off easily. Some skyscrapers have hollow floors that contain nothing but an elevator and some complex machinery. They're called technical floors, and developers say they're there to maintain the building's proper functioning. But it's also a way to get around height limits. Some skyscrapers are given a limit to the number of floors they can have. Because the technical floors are non-residential, they add to the height of the building and make it look more impressive without increasing the number of floors and breaking the building contract. These floors can also help to prevent the spread of fires. If you look closely at an elevator door, you'll notice a tiny hole. This is actually a keyhole used for emergencies or for routine maintenance checks. If you get stuck in an elevator, the technician will be able to get you out of there by using their master key. Salt isn't just used for cooking. It can get rid of tough smells, like this. Whew. Rubbing salt on your fingertips after chopping garlic should remove the smell. It also works on shoes. Toasters have a secret slide in the bottom that can be removed, so you can clean out all those annoying breadcrumbs. Now, take a look at your laptop keyboard. There are bumps on the F and J keys, but nowhere else. When your fingers are in the optimal typing position, your index finger should rest on these two keys. The bumps have been added so that you can correctly position your hands for typing without looking at your keyboard. Washing your clothes on a low heat or even better, a cold wash, will make them last twice as long. Drying them on a line, if possible, will also make the material last longer than if you used a dryer. The less you wash them, the less they'll fade and shrink over time. It'll also save you on your energy bills. Blank pages in the books aren't actually made for the author's signature. It's all about the manufacturing process. Books are printed on large sheets, 
so one sheet can fit four printed pages. If a book has an odd quantity of printed pages, chances are you'll get a blank one for notes. Tree cart loops have more functions than you think. You don't want to put your fancy white jacket in a cart next to carrots and coke. This little hook-like thingy helps organize all the stuff in your cart better, so you can enjoy your shopping trip. Eh, works for me. A good doorknob is one made of brass, bronze, or some copper alloys. These metals have an anti-germ effect. Bacteria spread way slower on them. They also get rid of germs pretty fast, within a couple of hours. There's only one way you can store your peanut butter right. If you place it the regular way, it may get a bit solid before long. The trick is to store it upside down, so the oils don't stay on the bottom all the time and distribute evenly. Hmm, my dog loves peanut butter. How about yours? Whatever coffee shop you go to, all the disposable cups look exactly the same, only the logo changes. The secret here is the special shape that lets you enjoy your drink easily. The top is always wider, which allows it to accommodate your nose while you're drinking. And the bottom is always narrower, so that anyone can hold it easier, even if the hand is quite small. This width difference also allows the cups to stack. Spoiled milk emits gases, like most foods when they go bad, or me. A classic plastic milk jug has a concave shape on one side. So when the gases expand inside the jug, it expands too, and the concave shape curves out. Also, if you want to save some milk for later and freeze it, the jug will expand when the milk gets solid as well, occupying more space in a jug. Almost all measuring tapes have a metal tip with a small slot on the end. You can use this slot to hang the tape on a nail or a screw to make measurements without anyone's help. Sometimes this tip has a row of sharp points along the edge on one side. It comes in handy when you want to leave a mark without using a pencil. If you've ever tried a Nintendo cartridge to taste, <laughs> you'll confirm that they taste revolting, leaving a sour, bitterish aftertaste in your mouth. Well, we tried to tell you. They're covered with denatonium benzoate, one of the most disgusting flavors known. Not normally seen in ice cream stores either. Actually, this taste has a righteous function. It prevents people from swallowing those cartridges. Rough edges on the dimes are just about design. The coins used to be made of precious metals to show their real value. People would shave off the edges, spending the shaven coins with the same value and melt the edges to new coins. To avoid it, minters added that pattern so people could tell if someone cut that coin before. A triple handle on a jerry can is there to make it easier for two people to carry it and distribute the fuel evenly. Lemons get juicier if you warm them up a little bit in the microwave. The heat softens the frozen membranes so the juice can flow out freely. The result? More lemonade for you! The expiration date on mineral water isn't about water going bad. Actually, no water can spoil, but the bottle can. Over time, it starts leaking some chemicals that aren't quite safe. Okay, here's a science project to try. Tonic water can be fluorescent in UV black light. It contains quinine, which makes it both bitter and glowing. The color of plates and cups can affect your food perception. A group of 57 volunteers drank hot chocolate out of different cups, but most people claim the orange cup hot chocolate was the best. Red color plates are cool for those on a diet. It looks alarming, so you end up eating less. You open a bag of chips and find it half empty, or half full if you're an optimist. Frustrating, I know, but I figured it's not because the manufacturer wants to get more cash out of you. The extra air helps to protect your chips from any damage. If the bags were filled to the brim, you'd get chip dust instead of chips after their transportation. A raspberry-flavored ice pop is typically blue, not pink, or red, which both would be more obvious color choices. Well, imagine you're making a pack of popsicles. You can pick green for apple flavor, pineapple or lemon is yellow. They're strawberry, so it should be red. Cherry, well red again. Watermelon? Red. And now raspberry? Yeah, red. 
but four reds are definitely way too many, and people won't tell the difference between them easily. So, at first, both strawberry and cherry flavors were red, but of different shades. The watermelon one was pink. They made the raspberry ones of a deep, dark red dye. Then, scientists proved that that dye might be dangerous, so it was banned. Blue was another free color option, but there's no blue fruit or berry except for blueberry. And it's not a very popular flavor, so manufacturers started to paint raspberry blue. Sometimes, they call it blue raspberry. But it's just a lab thing that doesn't naturally exist. If you buy a clock or see a picture of it, it'll most likely show 1010 by default. The only reason behind it is that it just looks nice. You can see both hands, and they don't overlap. Also, it's symmetrical and nice, and it frames the 12. And finally, it makes a smiling shape that gives off a positive vibe. Mattresses usually have those decorative stitching patterns on them. Mattress manufacturers make a limited number of different mattresses, and the only way to make them look different is to come up with a fancy stitching pattern. Two mattresses of different companies might be the exact same quality, but cost differently. Most people will never know it and will decide that different patterns mean something in terms of quality. So, when shopping, don't mind the pattern at all. Cheese has holes. In most types, they're small, but they can also be huge. Cheese is made by adding bacteria to milk, and the holes are the result of it. Those bacteria consume lactic acid and release little gas bubbles. They're trapped in the cheese, and then they pop, forming those little holes. The size of holes depends on the production temperature and its acidity. Swiss cheese has extra large holes. It's made at a temperature of around 120 degrees Fahrenheit and incubated at 70 degrees Fahrenheit for 5 to 7 days. So the cheese is very soft and the bubbles grow especially big. All coins have ridges, but have you ever wondered why? At first, all coins were linked to a silver standard. The amount of silver used in a coin was proportionate to the value of the coin. So, a $1 coin had way more actual silver in it than, say, a quarter. The edges were made reeded for security reasons. Once, it was a coin element that made a coin harder to reciprocate. It also prevented another kind of fraud. People would shave off a bit of metal from the edges of coins. It would be just a little so that no one would notice the difference. But if you did it to many coins, you'd get enough precious metals to sell. Reeded edges made it impossible. If someone tried to shave them off, the ridge would become smooth, and it'd be obvious to anyone that a coin had been tampered with. Nickels and pennies didn't have them because they were made of inexpensive metals, so there was no sense in protecting them. Now, no one makes coins out of silver, but the ridges are still there. When the governments started to produce new coins, they didn't see a point in changing the coin-making equipment, and they just kept the reeded edges. If you ever played billiards, you must know that green table well. The game originated around the 14th century, five centuries before basketball. Back then, folks didn't have pool tables, of course. Instead, they were playing it outside on the green lawn. Later, people moved the game indoors so they could play it even when it was raining. And they kept the nostalgic green to give it some lawn vibes. Medical workers usually wear a uniform that is a shade of blue or green. There's a reason for it. Before the 20th century, they were wearing their regular clothes, even when performing surgery. With the development of medicine, people started to pay more attention to matters of sterileness, so they started to wear a uniform, and at first, it was white to signify purity. The problem was that some stains were very hard to wash off from the white uniform the color white would become greenish. So, it made sense to make the uniform green or blue. Besides, surgeons mostly focus on red colors during work. Blue and green are exactly the opposite side of the spectrum. So, if everything else is greenish blue, the red becomes even more distinctive. Wash your hands with plain white soap and you'll see some white foam. 
Wash them with a blue, red, yellow, green, whatever color, and the foam is still white. The reason for it is scattered light. Any light rays that falls on an object either get absorbed or are reflected back. Things that absorb all colors appear black. Those that reflect all colors are white. A red bar of soap is red because only the red color reflects back, and the other colors are absorbed. But once you produce some foam, it's made of many little bubbles. Each of them scatters light in different directions, so it looks white. Do you see something when you rub your eyes? These colors and shapes are called phosphenes. The reason why you see them is that when you're rubbing, you increase the pressure in the eyeball and activate the neurons of the retina that process visual information. Once they're activated, your brain interprets it as if you see the light and it tries to actually see it. Ever wondered why you have black circles around your eyes when you're tired? The skin under the eyes is very thin, so the blood vessels are very close to the surface and you can see any difference easily. When you lack sleep, your skin gets paler, and the blood vessels are even more visible. So, you can see those dark circles showing through the skin. Also, with age, your skin naturally gets thinner, so that's why older people tend to have dark circles. But if you're young, try to get more sleep, and they'll be gone. You say Germany, the Spanish say Alemania, and the Germans say Deutschland. And it sounds like three different countries, but it's just one. If someone's name is Olivia, she will be more or less of Olivia everywhere. So why do countries have different names in different languages? Countries have existed for a long time. Back when people from different countries couldn't communicate and spoke different languages, they'd refer to some territory the way they referred to it, never agreeing with other countries, and the name stuck. A German tribe called Alemanni once lived in what's now Switzerland. So I guess that's why the Spanish started to call the land Alemannia. Then the Germans were united and called themselves Deutschland. In English, the pronoun I is always capitalized. Even the linguists don't know for sure why it's so. At least yet. I comes from the German Ich. During the time it evolved from Ich to Ich and later to I. Some theorize that a little I appeared to be too insignificant in a sentence, standing on its own, so it started to be capitalized to be more distinctive. If you've ever seen a behind-the-scenes video, you might have noticed that they click that clapperboard before each scene. This clap helps a lot at the stage of editing. The film and the audio are recorded separately, and when they're synchronized, the clapperboard makes that brief clap at the very beginning of a shot scene. And it's easier to find where the scene starts to add the audio. Another reason is to give more details on the filmed piece. They add information about the scene and take number, the filming date, the camera angle, and other important stuff to the clapperboard that makes it easier to go through hundreds of video pieces later. You're heading to a supermarket to get a few small items. The self-service checkout is way faster than waiting for people to unload their huge shopping carts. But this loud voice from a machine, commanding over and over again, spoils all the appetite. Now. I have some good news for you. You can turn it off. Take a closer look at the screen. You'll probably see a volume button at the bottom. Use your finger to mute the annoying polite voice once and for all. Not all machines have this hidden option though, but it's definitely worth checking out. Usually, a sunflower oil bottle has this weird inner cap. Most people remove the entire top layer and throw it away. But there's actually a better way to use it. Turn the removed element inside, down, and put it into the bottleneck. It will make a great dispenser, and you'll never spill more oil than you wanted in your salad. Planning a picnic with your friends in the wild? Forget about the classic picnic basket. We got it all wrong. It's not a basket, but a bucket. Yep, it's way better to put your picnic stuff into several buckets. This will help evenly distribute the weight among all guests. And when you find a nice spot for your picnic and get all the stuff out, turn the buckets over and use them as stools. 
When the food is over, put the buckets into each other to save space on the way back home. Your toast is getting burnt, but you don't have any kitchen tongs at hand? Take two identical forks. Put them together time to time. Stick them tightly with a rubber band. And voila, your tongs are ready. Ever wondered what this double bottom under the Nutella lid is for? There's only one way to find out. Here's a brand new Nutella jar. Let's remove the white carton circle and then peel off the foil. Surprise! There should be a little knife to cut the gold foil cover. Now you know how to get access to your favorite guilty pleasure without scratching your hands. Don't throw away the glass jar after you're done with Nutella. It can turn into a candle holder or a lantern. Wash it, paint it to your taste, add some decorations or lettering. Glue a decorative rope around the neck of the jar. Set a candle inside the jar or put string lights inside it. No one will ever guess that it used to be a Nutella jar. It'll be our secret. Have you ever wondered why Ritz crackers have ridges? You can use them as a safe knife for cheese and similar soft products like cucumber, ham, and so on. Just roll the cracker as if it were a tiny pizza cutter and press. Now all the ingredients fit on your cracker perfectly. Enjoy your snack. Do you have one of those old baking trays that you never use but still hesitate to throw away? Good news! You can recycle it and make a gorgeous frame for a painting or a picture. There are two ways to do so. Degrease the surface of your tray and attach the image to the bottom. In this case, the frame will stick forward. Or you can flip the tray upside down and the edges will hide behind. Hang this construction on a wall or put it on a shelf. And feel free to use metal paint to give your frame an appropriate color. An old cutting board can make a great frame for a mirror. Use double-sided tape to attach a matching mirror to the surface of your board. Make sure the mirror is firmly glued. And now you can hang it on a wall using the board's handle. Or put it on a cabinet and lean it on a wall. Don't forget to wash and dry the cutting board before beginning this DIY. We don't want the mirror to smell fishy. Another superpower of a cutting board is keeping wires tangle-free. Wrap some string lights around an old wooden cutting board and put it in your closet. The next holiday season, you'll have it completely untangled. A hair dryer can make a great mini vacuum cleaner when you need an emergency cleaning. Cut a plastic bottle and dry it. Put a layer of fabric on the fan of your hair dryer. Then place the fan in the plastic bottle bottom portion. Fix the bottle and attach it to the hair dryer using a plaster. Turn it on and you're ready to clean the mess. You can use a retro gas stove grate to hang your indoor plants. Attach it to the wall with screws or nails. Now you're ready to hang flower pots, string lights, and any other decor items. If the color of your stove grate doesn't match the interior, you can always fix this using spray paint. Chopsticks and wooden ice cream sticks can also turn into a beautiful panel that will decorate your interior. Glue the edges together to create a grid. You can also put together your name or any other word you want out of sticks. Then wrap the grid around with string lights and enjoy your decor. Don't throw away wrinkled kitchen foil. It can help to sparkle up your day. Crumple identical foil balls and glue them over a glass, a mirror frame, or even a book, and your life will immediately become more glamorous. If you need to sharpen your dull scissors, take aluminum foil and crunch it up into a ball. Sharpen the edges of the scissors right on that ball of foil. To speed up your ironing routine, place sheets of tin foil under your ironing board and then put the cover back on. The tin foil will reflect the heat. The iron will get hotter and will do the job much faster. If you struggle to organize all your jewelry and lose your favorite items from time to time, use a sponge to store it. Just make a few cuts and put your shiny little friends inside these cuts. They will sit firmly in the sponge and won't fall out or mix. 
You can also use a sponge to create an organizer for your jewelry. Find a cute box, cut your sponge into matching pieces, and put them inside the box. Use glue or tape to attach the sponge to the box and enjoy your new jewelry casket. You can easily make chocolate-filled strawberries at home. Take a plastic syringe, fill it with chocolate paste, remove the leaves from a strawberry, and stick the syringe into the hole from which the sprig usually sticks out. Squeeze chocolate into the berry, and it's ready. You can use the same technique when you bake eclairs, apples, or want to leave a chocolate note on a pancake to surprise your significant other in the morning. Wooden pants hangers with metal clips can be handy when it comes to hanging curtains or a backdrop for your photo shoot. If you need to hang curtains but don't have any special hooks, attach several plants hangers along the entire length of the curtains and then hang this construction on a ledge. An old metal tea jar serves as a mini shelf for small things in your kitchen. Apply double-sided tape to the jar and stick it to the top corner of your cabinet. Now here's a trick. Instead of putting the box grater vertically on top of a plate, put it horizontally, with no plate underneath, of course. This way, you won't risk scraping your knuckles because only your fingertips will eventually touch the grater when you reach the end of the process. Also, it gives the grater more stability, when otherwise you'd have to balance the grater or even hold it in the air with the other hand. When you're done, or when there's just too much grated stuff on the bottom wall of the grater, simply turn it on its side to pour the contents into the bowl or plate. Flowers in a vase would stay fresher for longer if not for the bacteria that breed in the water. Since copper has some antibacterial properties, dropping a penny into the water will help keep the microbes at bay and let you enjoy your flowers for that little bit longer. An easy way to check if your bed linen has dried completely is to put a small mirror in between the layers for about 5 minutes. If the mirror has steamed up when you pick it up, it means the sheets are still a bit damp. Let them dry until the mirror stops getting cloudy. A damp bed is a lovely breeding ground for fungi and bacteria. Okay, I'm in. If you have a not very healthy habit of eating in front of your computer, you'll be surprised at how much crumbs and grime there is inside your keyboard. Now, you can just turn it over and shake it vigorously, of course, but that's not very good for any piece of tech, you know. So instead, Take a post-it note and run its sticky part over the keyboard. It will collect the little pieces of trash like magic. Even a better way to do it, though, is to take a slime and stick it to the keyboard. Then take it away, squeeze it, and stick again in another part. The slime will fill the entire space between the keys, and its sticky properties will let it gather every little bit of garbage. Separating egg yolks from whites is easier using a plastic bottle. Break the necessary number of eggs into a bowl and then take an empty plastic bottle and squeeze it. Hold the bottle over the yolk and release. It'll pull in air and the yolk together, leaving the white in the bowl. Repeat with the rest of the yolks and you're done! And that's no yolk! (laughs) If you're tired of spitting out the stones when eating cherries or want to make a cherry pie, push the stones out with a straw. Also, many garlic presses have a special tool on their handle that can be used exactly for that. Cleaning a blender can be a nuisance if you do it manually. Instead, fill it with hot water and add some liquid soap or detergent, then run it for about 10 seconds. Rinse it afterwards, and it's clean. Plaster walls can crumble, flake, and spread dust all over the floor when you hammer nails into it. Cut a strip of masking tape and stick it to the place you want to hammer a nail in. The tape won't let the plaster crack and crumble, leaving the hole neat and clean. Small scratches and dents on wooden furniture can be removed with some toothpaste or a walnut. For toothpaste, rub a pea-sized amount of it into the scratch until it's gone, then wipe the leftovers with a damp cloth. For a walnut, take a half of that brain-shaped nut and rub it into the dent. Then rub the area with your fingers and buff it with a soft cloth. This will help the wood absorb the oil from the nut, making the scratch sealed and gone. The sticky residue on jars left after you remove the stickers won't be easily removed by water and detergent. So take some vegetable oil instead. Soak a cotton pad in it and wipe the sticky surface. Let it sit for a while and then wash the oil away together with the residue. 
If you can't comfortably reach the wick of a candle with a lighter, hey, take a stick of spaghetti. Light up its end, and you'll get a burning stick that's easy to use for hard-to-reach places. Now, next time your razor blade's getting dull, try rubbing it backwards on a pair of jeans for regular upkeep. Not while you're wearing them, of course. Make sure you keep the blades dry, too, or even kept in mineral oil. That'll stop them from rusting. Keep all those jelly, ketchup, peanut butter, and mayo fresher for longer in your fridge by turning the contents upside down. This creates a partial vacuum inside the container, helping prevent mold growth. Storing ice cream upside down will prevent freezer burn, too. To bring your permanent marker back to life, simply put a few drops of rubbing alcohol into the felt material inside and shake. Once the felt absorbs the rubbing alcohol for a couple of minutes, the marker will be almost as good as new. Now, don't keep throwing away lettuce that goes black too quickly. Covering it with a dry paper towel and then placing it in an airtight container will help it keep fresher for much longer. This goes for any leafy greens you've got leftovers of. That sharpish bit sticking out of the cap of your favorite cream is there for a reason. These tubes are usually sealed with foil, so unless you love breaking your nails trying to open them, just flip the cap over and push. Your bobby pins might not stay in place if the grooves aren't facing the right way. They should always be on the bottom, close to your head. Still coming loose? Well, put a squeeze of hairspray right onto the bobby pin before you put it in your hair. Now, your cotton rounds pack has those strings on it, so you can hang it on a handy hook in the bathroom. But there's no need to loosen and tighten it back up every time. Check out the bottom of the pack. It has a perforated line. Tear it open carefully, and you're good to go. Two zips too much? Maybe, but they come in handy as a clever anti-theft device. Just lock them together. Now no one can open your backpack. Don't have a lock on you? You can also tie them together with some string, or even just a paper clip. Anything to slow those pickpockets down. That tiny little button on the back of a shirt collar is used to hold your tie in place. Hey, you don't want your tie trying to escape back there. Shoe manufacturers care about their customers. So most running shoes now have a special anti-blister system pre-installed. Sounds intense, but it's basically just that extra hole on top of your sneakers. Make a loop with the extra hole, inserting the lace backward. Cross your laces and put them through the loops. Now pull the laces down to lock your foot in place. Now run. Yeah, go ahead. Car headrests are all about comfort, and detachable headrests are all about safety. If you pull the headrest out, you'll see two sturdy metal bars. If you ever get locked or trapped in your car, you can use the bars to smash the window and get out. If you've got some pesky parsley stuck in your teeth, try this tip. It can be hard to get it out with loose floss. You need more tension, so just tie it in a knot. It's not an accident that soy sauce bottles have two spouts. The sauce is liquid, and it flows out of the bottle pretty easily once you turn it over. Most Asian food lovers have spilled it at least once in a lifetime. That's why nowadays, restaurants prefer serving soy sauce in special bottles that have two spouts. This design allows you to control when and how much sauce will come out. Just put your finger on one spout when you pour the sauce through another. If you press your finger tightly to the spout, the sauce will stop flowing, and if you remove your finger, it'll flow again. And don't forget to ask your server, Hey, wasabi! All right. A hair straightener is an excellent tool, not only for treating your natural curls, but also for fixing crumpled money or documents. You can also use a regular iron for this purpose. Just make sure you don't turn on steaming mode, otherwise there's a risk of damaging the paper. Hair bands are good not only for getting your hair done, but also to open a glass jar with canned food. Your hands might slip on the tightly closed lid, and if you don't open the can from the first attempt, your palms tend to get sweaty, making the task virtually impossible. So put a hairband on the lid to fix your hand and make your grasp stronger. A simple rubber band will do as well. Now, it's time to take my sweaty palms and go. You've probably noticed that train and bus seats are covered in fabrics with weird patterns. Have any idea why? Well, they use these patterns to cover any germs and stains on the seats. The brighter the color and the more patterned it is, the harder it will be for passengers to notice any stains and get grossed out. 
Also, the patterns are usually so ugly that no one even wants to look at them for long enough to spot any stains. So yeah, the pattern is there to make you look away. And if you look, to make it less noticeable. No bus will ever have plain white seats, that's a guarantee. Just a few more bus-related questions to answer. Like, why don't buses have seat belts? Buses are overall way safer than cars because they were designed this way. The idea behind this is called compartmentalization, meaning that the seats have high backs that absorb energy. The seats are also placed close to one another, so there's less space to move in case of an impact. Also, on a bus, the passengers sit pretty high off the ground, and in case of a collision, the force is absorbed by the bus's deck and not by the people inside. On top of that, a bus is way heavier than most other vehicles, and even if there is a collision, it distributes the force way differently than a regular car. Due to its weight, a lot of force is absorbed, and bus passengers don't experience much crush force. So, small and light buses that can't distribute the force as well actually do require seatbelts. And we have to remember that buses drive slowly, which minimizes the risk of an accident overall. We all know that school buses are yellow, but why? It's for visibility reasons. Yellow is one of the most easily recognized colors, and for a human eye, yellow is even more visible than, say, red. So, school buses are yellow to make them more distinctive. Also, yellow is visible in the dark, in fog, and on a rainy day. Actually, the color of the bus isn't really a true yellow. It also has a hint of orange. This shade even has an official name, National School Bus Glossy Yellow. By the way, taxi cabs are yellow for the same reason, to be more visible in any weather conditions. Also, buses have huge steering wheels, and I finally learned why. Buses are bigger than regular cars, and they're also way heavier. So it's harder to turn a bus around, and way more strength is required to do so than when you drive a car. A bigger steering wheel that has a bigger radius allows the driver to turn the vehicle more easily, and it requires less force than if the wheel were smaller. Trucks have big steering wheels for the same reason. But have you seen those stuffed toys that some trucks have attached in front of them? Turns out, it's just a way for truck drivers to customize their vehicles. It's like a mascot that speaks about the truck or the driver. It's also a way to communicate to the world that the truck driver isn't all scary and tough, but a soft and harmless person that you shouldn't be afraid of. At least, that's how some truck drivers explain it. In Asia, there's also a belief that road accidents are caused by ghosts, and hanging toys are a way to distract the ghosts from causing harm to the truck. Ever been on a road trip? If you're not the driver, all you have to do is just sit in one place and do basically nothing for hours. Doesn't sound like a hard task, but some people find it terribly exhausting. And because of this, they resent road trips. Why do they get so tired? Well, sitting in a car isn't like sitting in a chair. The brain doesn't relax. Instead, it controls everything that's going on, accounting for movements and making sure that you maintain the right posture. Your brain is constantly working, exchanging bits of information with your muscles, so your body is working. Some people get tired because of this. If you aren't doing much, it doesn't mean that your body isn't doing much. Train rides are way more tolerable because trains don't stop or change speeds as often as cars do. So the body is more relaxed and train trips are way more tolerable for people who aren't fans of road trips. Another mystery is why it's way harder to stand still in the same spot for 30 minutes in comparison to, for example, walking for 30 minutes. Again, it sounds like you're not doing anything when you're standing. So why is it so tiring? Well, standing is a pretty hard task for your body. When standing, the muscles in your legs work very hard to support the mass of your whole body. If you're standing, there are not many muscles working, and only a few of them have to do all the work. When walking, there are more muscles working at the same time, so it's easier. Also, when standing, both of your legs are working without stopping. But when walking, each of them gets a tiny break each time you step using the other leg. Why is it that the same book can have different covers? There are several reasons for this. First, the cover may vary because of the target audience. An edition of a book that is being marketed to older people is usually different from the edition aimed at younger people, with the one for younger people usually being brighter and cuter. 
The cover can also depend on the country the book is being sold in, trying to attract as many buyers as possible based on the tastes of the population. Next, books vary from edition to edition. At first, a book is printed in hardcover in small quantities to see how it'll do on the market. If the book is a relative success, there is another edition printed, often in trade paperback. The design of the cover is usually updated with every edition. Also, if a book has a movie based on it, there is usually another edition that follows. This edition will take advantage of the movie and use a movie scene as the cover, making it recognizable for people who saw and liked the movie and encouraging them to buy a copy of the book. Most books are printed on yellowish paper, and few have plain white pages. But why is that? Unless it's a mass-market paperback edition, with paper that's the same quality as a newspaper, meaning bad. It's done with good quality paper. Don't let the yellow hue confuse you. It's usually called cream, and it's a preference for any book because it's less tiring on the reader's eyes. The plain white paper is bleached, and it reflects a lot of light so it can be exhausting to read for a long time. So, that yellowish paper is the best paper, and publishers regularly use it. Another thing about books is those blank pages they often have at the very end. Their number depends on the number of pages in the book. The thing is that books are printed in signature. A signature is a group of pages that printers fold together and cut to make a book. A signature can have a different number of book pages, with the minimum being 4 and then with other numbers divisible by 4. So, a book that is 300 pages long, in total, will fit in perfectly, and there will be no blank pages left. But if a book needs 303 pages, it'll need an additional signature, and the extra pages will remain blank, often marked with the word notes or with the message, this page is intentionally left blank, to let the reader know that there's no important information missing. Ever wondered why most doctors have sloppy handwriting? No, there's no class in medical colleges on bad handwriting. The reason why it's so common is that doctors are always in a rush, and they write as fast as possible to keep their momentum, so there's no time to care about writing nicely. Also, keep in mind that you're not the only person who they write a prescription for over the course of a day. Doctors do a lot of paperwork, working for 10 hours straight, and they're just too tired most of the time to give you a properly written note. Have you noticed that most songs, in general, last somewhere between 3 and 4 minutes? Well, originally, songs were being played on a phonograph record player from a vinyl record, which was spinning at 78 revolutions per minute. So, the size of the vinyl record basically determined the length of the song. There were two basic record sizes, a 10-inch one, which had room for about 3 minutes of playtime, and a 12-inch, which could fit a 4-minute song. So, at the beginning of the 20th century, if an artist wanted their song played, they couldn't make it longer than that if they wanted to be able to sell a record. Times have changed, but still, most songs are about 3 to 4 minutes long. The initial reason for sticking to this pattern was also because of radio. If a song was too long, it would either get cut in half or some parts would be left off to make it fit into the 3 to 5 minute radio standard. If an artist wanted the song on the radio, and if they wanted to earn money from it, they do their best to make a song that fits the standard so that the whole piece could be played without alterations. Today, even if there are longer songs, a 3-4 to four minute song is now a tradition that artists typically stick to. Crackers have holes in them to stop them cracking and breaking during baking. If the holes weren't there, steam would build up inside the cracker and make it collapse. Take a look at a soda bottle and you'll notice a disc inside the bottle cap. This helps seal in the liquid and the drinks fizz stopping it from going flat. The long neck on your soda bottle is designed like that to encourage you to hold it there. That way, the heat from your hand will only warm that top bit of the bottle instead of heating up your whole drink. It's always hard to see your food in the microwave because of that pesky black grate on the window, but it's there to stop harmful microwaves from escaping. Called the Faraday Shield, it protects you as well as ensures that your food cooks properly. Food items like chips come with about 43% nitrogen inside their package. It might seem like they sell you half a bag of air, but it's exactly the opposite. Oxygen, the gas we breathe, would react with the chips inside the bag and make them go rancid quickly. It's called oxidizing for a reason. Nitrogen, on the other hand, is an inert gas that helps keep the foodstuffs fresh. 
and also protects them from breaking during transportation. A bag of chips that has this gas cushion lets you enjoy your crunchies without them turning to potato crumbs. Donuts have holes in them so that the inside and outside cook evenly. Before the holes were added, the inside would often be greasy and doughy while the outside was crisp. Margins on paper aren't for writing in dates and numbering lists. They were originally added to serve a protective function. Back in the day, rats used to be a pesky problem in people's homes, and paper was one of their favorite snacks. Margins were added as a safeguard so that the rats would nibble on blank paper, rather than taking a bite out of your important work. That hole in your hollow lollipop stick isn't to prevent choking should it ever be swallowed. It's actually there to keep the candy in place. Excess candy flows into the hollow tube, and the hole, which when it hardens, keeps the pop in place. If it was a smooth stick, the candy would slide off easily. Vacuums come with so many attachments, but do any of us really know what that one with long bristles is for? It's for dusting and is perfect for cleaning framed art, blinds, and lampshades. What's the difference between a wooden hanger and a plastic one? Aside from helping keep your clothes in shape, cedar wood hangers also repel moths and bugs. Salt isn't just used for cooking, it can get rid of tough smells. Rubbing salt on your fingertips after chopping garlic should remove the smell. It also works on shoes. Toasters have a secret slide in the bottom that can be removed, so you can clean out all those annoying breadcrumbs. If you ever had problems with popping chocolates from the box, look at those little holes around them. They're there to help you. If you push a hole right next to the candy, it'll jump out easily. When you take a sip from a coffee cup with a lid, it decreases air pressure inside the cup, so air tries to get in. The tiny hole on the lid allows air to enter that way, so liquid can smoothly pour out the main hole. More on beverage lids. The small button on them let restaurant workers, and customers too, understand what's in a cup. Near each button, there's a name. Just look at which one is pushed down. The numbers on the fruit stickers tell you how exactly they were grown. If there are four digits and the first is four or three, the fruit has been sprayed with pesticides. If there are five digits and the first is nine, the fruit has been grown organically. If there are five digits and the first is eight, the fruit has been genetically modified. When you're on your way back to the car after bagging up everything you bought, use loops on a shopping cart to hang the bags. Now softer items like bread, eggs, fruit and veggies won't get squashed by the heavier goods. If you don't have anyone to hold the other end of your tape measure when you try to measure something, tap a nail on it. Now simply hook your tape on it using the tiny hole all tape measures have. The square-shaped spoon that goes with a McFlurry helps to mix the ice cream toppings through the dessert. The spoon hooks directly to a machine and spins around. Padlocks that are used outside quickly get out of order because of rain. See this little hole in the bottom? It's made for pouring engine oil inside. Do this and the key will again turn in the lock without any difficulty. You keep banging the bottom of a glass ketchup jar, but nothing's coming out. Here's a little tip. Turn your ketchup bottle at an angle and tap on the middle of the neck. In many fast food restaurants, customers fill tiny folded paper cups to get a portion of ketchup or mustard. Here's the news. The cups are supposed to unfold and turn into small paper platters to hold a great deal more sauce. That little hole on the handle of a pot or a frying pan isn't just for hanging them on the wall. During cooking, put the end of your utensil in the hole, and it'll be propped over the pot to save your kitchen from extra mess. The blue or any other dark color bristles on your toothbrush are meant to remind you when it's time to get a new one. If you see that bristles have become pale, change the toothbrush or its head. An extra hole at the upper part of the sink has multiple hidden functions. First, in case someone forgets to close the tap, the water won't overflow and the bathroom won't get flooded. Second, thanks to that hole, the water drains faster 
as it gives an escape for the air, helping the water flow down. Most metallic zippers have a hidden lock inside them to save you from awkward situations, such as an undone fly. Don't leave the zipper handle in an upward position. When you pull it downwards, it automatically locks. It's all thanks to those tiny grooves hidden underneath the handle. Spoiled milk emits gases, like most foods when they go off. A classic plastic milk jug has a concave shape on one side. So when the gases expand inside the jug, it expands too, and the concave shape curves out. Also, if you want to save some milk for later and freeze it, the jug will expand when the milk gets solid as well, occupying more space in a jug. Bath foam isn't only for fun or a nice smell. It also helps regulate the temperature. The bubbles keep the water hot, so you can enjoy a bath a bit longer. Anyway, it works for acrylic bathtubs only. Those made of metal lose heat really fast either way. Many cups and mugs have little grooves on the bottom on purpose. They're designed for washing machines. The grooves let the water flow and not spill over your feet when you take the cup out. Also, those grooves let the air flow so the cup doesn't crack even if the tea is scalding. A point on an ointment cap is there for a reason too. Most tubes are usually sealed with foil and it's better to avoid opening it with fingers unless you're ready to say goodbye to your nails. A point easily opens even the most safely sealed tube. Escalator brushes aren't for keeping your shoes clean and polished. It might be tough to apply wax right on that brush while the escalator's on the move. It's for your safety. Brushes won't let you come close to the edge, so a long coat or boot-cut jeans won't end up in between the steps. All Tic Tac containers are designed to dispense one Tic Tac every time you open it. The lid has the same shape as the candy. Turn the container upside down, gently shake it, and slowly open it. You'll notice only one candy stuck between those lid grooves. So if you just open the container and shake it until five or even more candies fall into your mouth, it means you've been eating Tic Tacs wrong all this time. Over 40 billion Oreos are made every single year. It's the world's most popular manufactured cookie. The geometric design stamped into these cookies has the Nabisco logo, the symbol of European quality, surrounding the word Oreo. William Turnier created the chocolate cookie design we see today back in 1952. Headphone jacks might become a thing of the past because of wireless technology. But if you've seen one, you might have noticed the rings at the base of the plug. One ring means single sound playback, two rings represent stereo sound in the left and right ear, while three rings means you've got stereo and a microphone built in. Now, the iconic orange, red, purple, yellow, and lime green rings of Fruit Loops hide a deep secret within. They don't represent different fruit flavors. All those rings are the same fruit flavors blended together. The colors are just for show. Mm. The E in Dell's logo is at an angle because the founder, Michael Dell, wanted his technology to turn the world on its ear. A compass uses magnets to point to the magnetic North Pole. But it's not really north at all. The north pole of a compass magnet points toward the north because the north and south attract. Earth's south magnetic pole is near the geographic north, while the north pole is near Earth's geographic south. Confusing, isn't it? Those little red spots you sometimes see after you crack an egg are nothing to be worried about. Tiny blood spots can be caused by a small rupture in the blood vessel of the hen as it was laying the egg. Eggs with these blood spots are safe to eat, but that spot can be removed if you want. It won't affect the taste of the egg. That's comforting. Ketchup is a word taken from many cultures, like Chinese, Malay, and Indonesian. It originally meant a pickled fish sauce. Catsup is also an acceptable spelling used. However, ketchup is the most popular way it's spelled these days. Airbnb's logo isn't a bent paperclip, as it may seem to be. Bello, as it's called, for belonging, means more than that. There's a person's head, the location symbol, and a heart for love. All joined together, they make Airbnb's iconic A and symbol of togetherness. E120, or natural red 4 food coloring, aka carmine, 
is made from tiny beetles. It's been used to color anything from cakes to candy to even drinks. But Shine On Candy also comes from bugs. This time, it's the Indian female lac bug. The beetle leaves behind a substance that is scraped from the trees to be formed into dry shellac that gives that glossy look. The Mozilla Firefox logo isn't a fox at all surrounding the planet. It's a red panda instead. The name Firefox is the English translation of its Chinese name. Those maintenance covers in the street are round for safety reasons. In past civilizations, like ancient Rome, manholes, that's what they were called back then, were square-shaped slabs of stone. Unfortunately, these were prone to accidents. If they weren't placed properly, a square cover could slip through the square hole diagonally. Ow! Placing a round cover eliminated this problem. A circle cover won't slip inside because there are no angles. A tomato isn't technically a vegetable, but a fruit. Banana trees aren't related to palm trees or trees at all. They're herbs. Banana is considered an herb because it never builds a woody trunk the way a tree does. Instead, it forms a succulent stalk, like lemongrass or its cousin, ginger. You can call them berries as well. The Golden Gate Bridge color wasn't meant to be the orangey-red that it is today. The bridge's original color was suggested to be many other colors, such as black with yellow stripes or even candy cane to make it visible for passing ships and aircraft, especially in the frequent San Francisco fog. But when the steel arrived, covered in an orange primer to protect it from rust, the architect preferred the international orange color, and it stuck. Those legs on the back of keyboards aren't an ergonomic design to help your wrists sit better. Using the legs out for too long can tire and hurt your wrists, plus slowing your typing down. The hinge legs are just there to help you see the letters and numbers better if you don't know how to touch type. The color of a chili pepper reveals nothing about its taste or heat. The smaller a chili is, the hotter it'll usually be. The heat doesn't come from the seeds, as believed, but the white membranes that hold them. Hidden within the Toblerone logo of the mountain is the image of a bear standing on its hind legs about to eat that yodeler over there. No, not really. This is because bears are a big part of Bern, one of the biggest cities in Switzerland where the founder created the Triangle Chocolate Tree. Toblerone is also a play on the founder's family name, Tobler, and the Italian word Torone for honey and almond nougat. The space below a cup of noodles is there to protect the noodles during transport. This technique is called a middle suspension. Not only are they protected better in their styrofoam cup, but it also helps those noodles soften more evenly and quickly. Now, even though you might have thought that the hole in the barrel of a ballpoint pen had no purpose, it does. It's called a venting system, which helps the ink flow more smoothly. This way, an even amount of air pressure is created inside and outside the pen, allowing the ink to flow into the point easily. One of the most recognized logos in the cycling world has a hidden item in its famous logo. Inside the Tour de France name, a cyclist hides in the O, U, and R. Those metal brackets on the top of the nozzles in gas stations have a unique design put into place in case of accidents. If a dodo accidentally forgets the nozzle is still inside the gas tank and starts driving away, the magnetic brackets separate without damaging any part of the gas pump. Wendy's logo is designed off of the daughter of creator Dave Thomas. It's also named after her nickname, but there is more to the logo than that. Wendy's collar spells out the word mom. While unintentional, it became something to mean a homey feel more than any other restaurant out there. Finding the right lane to be in while driving for your exit can sometimes be confusing, especially in a foreign country. Pay attention to the side of the road that exit signs are located. It'll be the lane you need to be in. Some toothpaste has a little seal on them that needs to be removed before you can use them. Instead of peeling back the foil layer, the toothpaste lid has a little spike on the top just for this reason. Tostitos have a secret symbol hidden right in the middle of their name. The two T's in the middle of the logo 
resemble two people enjoying Tostitos over a bowl of salsa. The salsa bowl is in red and forms the dot in the eye. One of the most recognizable figures in the world, the Statue of Liberty, for 16 years functioned as a fully operational lighthouse. However, the light was barely visible, even from Manhattan. In 1901, it was eventually decommissioned as a lighthouse. Tourists could even visit the torch for a stunning view of the city. But an accident damaged the Statue of Liberty's torch in 1916, and it's been closed to the public ever since. The do not remove under penalty of law tag on mattresses isn't put there for the consumer or void your warranty either if you do remove them. In the 1900s, manufacturers used to create the filling with basically anything. Animal hair, old hospital beds, or clothing. It didn't matter at the time. Strict laws created the tags to stop recycled materials from being used and sold as new. Good thing! Toyota's symbol is more than just some random rings combined. The three overlapping ovals symbolize the merge of the hearts of consumers and Toyota together. A California sushi roll is made of seaweed, rice, cucumber, avocado, and crab meat. But it's not crab meat at all. Surimi is an imitation crab meat. It's made of white fish blended with sugar instead of crustaceans. The fish mixture is then heated and pressed into shape. The logo for Beats is just a lowercase b inside of a red circle. The circle represents a human head, with the b being the headphones in their shape. All those little black dots around the edges of car windows are called frits. A frit is a painted black enamel that's put into windshields during manufacturing. They block ultraviolet rays and help distribute temperatures between the metal and glass. There are 24 symbols hidden inside the Unilever logo. Let's count, shall we? The sun, dove, plant, spark, chili pepper, spoon, bowl, flower, ice cream, mm, hand, hair, lips, swirl, fish, clothes, bee, particles, packaging, transformation, waves, DNA, palm trees, heart, and virtuous cycle, whatever that is. These represent everything that the company believes in and produces. DNA? Bobby pins are designed so that the zigzag part goes onto your scalp, not the flat part. It gives a greater grip on the hair and skin, making the pin stay in longer. The story that the pins were named after those fashionable London constables called Bobbies is not true. I made it up. If you've ever gotten bored while waiting in a car like I have, you might have played around with a headrest. Yep, you can pull them off, and they'll come right off relatively easily. It seems useless at first, but that's something you'll want to do if you're ever trapped in a car and need to break a window to get out, like I do. Even a box of aluminum foil has its secret. On the side of the box, you can see a small tab you can push in. So simple, but that's what actually holds the roll of foil in place. This tab makes it way easier to unroll a sheet and tear it off without any frustration. Ever wondered why gripping a certain tool, handle, or even a pen kind of feels more secure when it's coated with a rubbery material? The keratin of the outer layer of the human skin is rough and stiff at a small scale. So let's say you have a polished metal or glass which is stiff but also a smooth and impenetrable surface. When you encounter that, the actual contact area is small, as is the friction at the beginning. Your sweat pores secrete moisture, which is why the keratin gets hydrated and becomes softer. Because of that, it requires many seconds for the contact area to increase to the same value it reaches almost right away with some soft materials like rubber. This mechanism might be used by our tactile senses when we want to identify materials. Now, the pom-poms on beanies and other hats have their purpose. And it's not just to look cute and fluffy. Well, at least they did have a purpose. One of the theories says French sailors used to wear hats with pom-poms so they wouldn't hurt their heads on the ship when the weather got rough. Yup, the ceilings of the ship were really low. When the waves were too big, bang, you could easily hit your head on the ceiling. So the pom-poms came in handy. Now they're just a cute addition to our winter caps. That mysterious drawer under the oven, the one where you keep all your kitchen gear you just don't know where else to put, 
Well, you used it well in that case, but the drawer was originally designed for keeping your meals warm, at least until you're ready to serve them. And that space under your lower cabinets that protrudes slightly and can't be lifted? This area is also called a toe kick. It's the reason why you can stand closer to the counter while cooking. Also, the doors of the cabinets are off the ground, so they'll swing over your toes. The cabinet under the sink isn't for storage either. Maybe that's where you keep your cleaning products, but its real purpose is to give you access if your sinks leak and you need to do some plumbing work. That weird little hole at the top of a lollipop stick you can see after finishing a candy is not a whistle. Mm -mm. It has something to do with the manufacturing process. When pouring hot molten caramel into a mold, some of it will seep into this mysterious hole and harden. This way, the candy will stay on the stick and won't fall off. Keyboard letters aren't just randomly arranged the way they are. The first keyboard ever made belonged to the typewriter. Typists eventually got so good at their job, they started typing too quickly. So the key arms would get crosswired at some point and stuck. That's why manufacturers had to make the order of keys more random to intentionally slow down typists so they could keep the machine running. Do you like to let those brushes on the side of the escalators in malls polish your shoes? Believe it or not, that's not their main gig. The bristles are there for safety. People used to get their bags and clothes stuck in those escalators when they would stand too close to the sides. These nylon bristles kind of play with people's minds and they keep their feet away from the escalator skirt panels and avoid accidents. Most people assume bobby pins have curves for fashion, which is why they mostly place it in their hair with the wavy side up. But those little waves are actually there to catch the underlying bulk of hair and grip the pin into place. So the wavy side should go down. You've probably noticed measuring tapes mostly come with a metal stub that ends with a small slot. If your hands are full of stuff, simply hang the slot on a nail for measurement. If you take a closer look, you'll see the stuff is a little bit serrated on one side. This means you can use it to mark the points, so you don't even need a pencil. If you spend a lot of time in planes, you've probably noticed that little hole located at the bottom of the window. Nothing to be nervous about, it's what keeps us safe while flying high. It's something called a bleed hole. You can see right there in the middle of the pane of the three window panes that actually protect passengers from the outside pressure. This hole may be tiny, but it takes all that pressure off the outer one. The hole also gradually exposes it to cabin pressure, which helps with fixing pressure imbalances on the windows, if there are any. There's a number 57 staring at you from the middle of the Heinz ketchup bottle forever. According to the company, only 11% of people are aware the number really has nothing to do with the product label. It's actually a sweet spot where you can tap to get the sauce onto the plate. So, next time you want some ketchup, there's no need to bang the bottom off. Just hit this spot. Grooves on the bottom of cups are there to make cleaning them in the dishwasher more convenient. When you place your cups upside down, these grooves will allow the water to flow rather than stagnate. This way, the water won't spill onto your feet when you take the cups out. The grooves are there to allow cool air to flow beneath the cup, too. They also keep cups from cracking when they heat up after you pour hot beverages in. You probably noticed that little dot next to the camera on an iPhone and probably thought it was a flash. Nope, not a flash, but a microphone in charge of catching sounds when you're using the back camera. Next time you're looking for a quick bite, and decide for fries at McDonald's, check that bendable flap near the top of the box. Some like to bend it towards the fries. That way, you can cover your fries up and keep them warm. But if you're not that patient, you can flip the flap backward and basically turn it into a makeshift plate for your fries. Just bend it down firmly enough. You don't want it to spring back up and spread the sauce all over you. Take it from me, it's messy. In the 1970s, people didn't want toothpaste just to keep their mouths healthy, but also to freshen their breath. Aquafresh decided to answer that call, so they added a blue stripe to their product. Since consumers started paying more attention to their teeth and gums, the company added a third red stripe to their paste. The paste now has three functions – freshening, cleaning, and plaque control. And yes, 
Solid white toothpaste can offer the same benefits, but brands continue to add stripes to their paste anyway. Speaking of toothpaste, do you know those colors on the bottom of tubes? The colors don't mean anything in particular. They're there to help in the manufacturing by telling light sensors where the end of the tube is. Thanks to it, the machine can cut and seal the tube properly. Hand sanitizers are commonplace nowadays, and you can apply them in many other ways besides just cleaning your hands. It also works great when you want to remove stains from your clothes. Sanitizer breaks up oily, greasy spillages and does a great job as a degreaser. You can even use it as a deodorant if you get caught out on a hot day. So grab your phone. Good, now turn it around. You see that little dot between the camera and the flash? That's a tiny microphone. Bet that's something you didn't know. What's it doing there? Well, when you're on a phone call, this little guy is busy at work reducing the amount of background noise other people hear when you talk. That's right, if it wasn't for this, calls wouldn't be as nearly as crisp as they are now. You're lost in the woods and you're rushing to get back to camp. You suddenly remember you've got something that can help. You grab one of your chest straps from your backpack and whistle on it. Yup, that's right. A lot of bags have this feature in them, especially the ones made for the outdoors. It isn't long before you hear the call of one of your friends and you follow them back to the warm campfire, saved by this cool bit of design. If you're a curious person, you might have wondered what that little pocket in your jeans is doing there. You know, the one that's inside the bigger pocket? People often use it to store coins and bills, but it's not meant for that. It's actually designed to store your pocket watch safely. Ah, maybe that's where the name pocket watch comes from? (laughs) You finally arrive home after a long day's work. You understandably don't feel like cooking, so you sit on the couch and watch a bit of TV and order some takeout. How about Chinese? Ah, perfect. There's the doorbell. That has to be your food. It smells delicious. Wait, before you grab the plates, do this instead. Open your Chinese food container on the table. It becomes the perfect plate. And it's cardboard. Which means no cleaning either. The can of soda you got with your food has a cool feature too. Look at the tiny metal tab there, the one you use to open the can. Guess what? You can fit your straw in there. In fact, that's exactly what they're made for. Go ahead, try it for yourself. If you're not at your computer, take a look at your keyboard right now. If you're not, that's okay. Here's one on the screen. The keycaps are arranged in what's called the QWERTY layout, named after the first six keycaps below the numbers. As it turns out, it wasn't always this way. They used to be laid out alphabetically, which would make more sense when you think about it. The alphabetical layout fell out of use because long ago, there were things called typewriters. Remember those? You press down a key, and a type bar would fly out, hitting an inked ribbon and stamping a letter on the piece of paper. Eventually, typists got good at this and typed faster. Too fast. The type bars would eventually get caught in a log jam with each other, ruining the flow. To fix this problem, they made keyboards with randomized keycaps. The new layout actually worked better because it made typing harder, helping to slow typists down and prevent the type bars from getting stuck. Much better! Today, no type bars. No typewriters, mostly. People are still fast nowadays, but you just can't help but wonder who is faster though, us or them. Keyboards have another hidden feature too. Have you ever noticed that the F keycap and the J keycap have little bumps on the bottom of them? As it turns out, they're there to help people figure out where they are on the keyboard without having to take their eyes off the screen. Grabbing a takeaway cup of coffee at your favorite cafe might be just what you need to fully wake up in the mornings. When you get back home or to work, though, you might be afraid to stain your desk when you put the steaming hot coffee down. Worry not, your plastic lid isn't only good for keeping your coffee hot, it also doubles as a coaster. In fact, they're the perfect size to hold a cup. Try it for yourself. This one's going to come in handy if you're a home cook. If you're like me, you might have a bit of trouble deciding how much pasta you need for just one serving. Well, if you've got a pasta scoop, grab that. 
Most people don't know what the little hole in the middle is for and assume it's supposed to help with water drainage or something. It turns out that it helps you measure out a perfect serving. Just see how much dry spaghetti you can fit in the hole and use that as one portion. Out of the store buying coat hangers, you might notice that the plastic ones feel cheaper than the wooden ones. There's a good reason for this. Wooden hangers are made out of cedar wood. The big difference between the two is that the wooden ones repel bugs and moths. They're stronger and last longer, too. Perfect for things that might stay in your closet for a long time. When you brush your teeth, you might have noticed that your toothbrush has blue bristles. They're not just there for show. In fact, they're there to tell you when it might be time to switch toothbrushes. These bristles lose their strength and color when the brush has been worn down letting you know that it's time to get rid of it. Microwaves often look a bit like mini-TVs, especially ones where you can clearly see the black film around them. This is actually a really important feature that's used to keep the radiation from slipping away. They're called Faraday cages, if you want to get technical. This is why you can stand next to a microwave without melting into a puddle. That's not to say you should stand in front of the microwave and watch your food heat up, but at least you know you won't grow an extra ear or something. Okay, not really. Some ovens have a drawer under them. It's tempting to use this to store random junk you don't use often, but there's a better use for it. Instead, this should be used to help keep the food that's waiting to be served hot. You can take it out of the oven and store it right in this drawer, keeping your oven free for you to carry on cooking. Now, you're on a plane looking around trying to pass the time before takeoff. When you examine the window, you notice this has a little, very tiny hole on its bottom. Don't worry, it's not broken. It's there to relieve the pressure that builds up over time as the plane goes up and down. It also lets the air flow through it. Now, raise your hand if you've ever ridden on an escalator and scrubbed your shoes on its bristles. Hey, I'm guilty of doing that. Maybe more than I should. It's not there to clean your shoes, though. It's an important safety measure. It stops your shoelaces, clothing, and other stuff from getting stuck in there, avoiding a nasty scene when you go to get off. Sometimes a piece of fabric comes with your new clothing. It usually comes along with the extra buttons in a little plastic bag. You might think it's just a piece of fabric to use for future patching, in case you rip it. But that isn't its purpose at all. It's actually supposed to be put in the washing machine to test how it reacts to various washings. Now, you don't have to worry about shrinking your new expensive coat because you know how it'll react to the wash. Bubbles! Who doesn't love bubbles? Most people have fond memories with bubble blowers as a kid. But as adults, the closest thing we can get to recapturing that feeling is with bubble baths. After a hard day at work, there's nothing better than dipping into a nice warm bubble bath. Right, guys? And the bubbles do more than just clean you. If they're high-quality bubbles, they'll serve as a heat insulator. So they make sure that your bath stays warm for longer. If you grab a full juice box a bit too firmly, you can get sticky liquid all over the place. To avoid such situations, flip up the tabs on the sides of the juice box. You can use them to hold your drink. Some cars have a tiny coffee cup sign on the dashboard. It's the vehicle's anti-drowsiness mechanism. Some manufacturers equip their cars with a drowsiness detection system. It analyzes the speed, wheel angle, and lane deviations and figures out if it's time for the driver to take a break. If it is, the vehicle makes several audio signals and the coffee cup sign starts to flash. Produce stickers on fruit and veggies you get at the supermarket are full of information. If there's a four-digit code on the sticker, the product was grown conventionally. In most cases, it also means that pesticides were used in the process. If the product is organic, its sticker has 5 digits, and the first one is 9. Genetically modified products also have a 5-digit code, but the first number is 8. Sugar used to be sold in sugar loaves. Those were tall, hard cones. At those times, to get sugar ready for tea, people had to use special hammers to break a loaf apart first. After that, they cut the sugar into smaller and more nicely shaped lumps. Only in the middle of the 19th century, people invented the first press that cut sugar into cubes. This way, the product was easier to store and transport. 
A little hole in the end of your wrench can provide your screwdriver with some extra torque. Just slide the end with the hole over the screwdriver. You can also use this method when the angle is awkward. While driving, when it's already dark, you might get blinded by the headlights of the car moving behind yours. If you have a manual rearview mirror, find a tab at the bottom and flip it. The mirror has a reflective material behind its glass. By flipping the tab, you change the angle of this material, dimming the lights in the mirror. Most ice cream scoopers come in different colors. It has nothing to do with aesthetics. The color indicates the size of the scoop. This way, you can easily figure out how many scoops you'll need to fill 32 ounces. Wow, a 32-ounce sundae! Sign me up! Some caps on small tubes are hollow on top and have a little spike inside. Its purpose is to break the foil sticker sealing the tube. The neck fits right in this hole, and the spike is designed to break the seal. This way, you don't need to tear the tiny foil seal off with your fingers. The letter R in a circle on the product's packaging means that the trademark is officially registered. Once it's done, the trademark's owner has the right to place this letter on all their products. They can also sue anyone who tries to use their trademark. A gas pump usually has a small metal latch or hook on its handle. That's a trigger lock. You can use it to lock the handle in the open position. Then the gas will keep pumping even if you walk away. Coins used to be shaped randomly or have no shape whatsoever in the past. Dishonest people used it to their advantage. They stole valuable metals the coins were made of by chipping their corners off. It was illegal, and to prevent this kind of fraud, round coins were invented. After that, it became easy to instantly notice when a coin had been fiddled with. Those two holes in a lollipop stick are there to hold the candy in place. When the stick is dipped in hot liquid syrup, it flows into the holes and solidifies. Now your sweet is there to stay. Fabric squares that come with clothes are for you to try out your cleaning products on them first. This way, you won't ruin the entire item once you decide to wash it. The holes in the bottoms of earphones allow air to circulate up and through the speakers. It helps to increase low frequencies, making the bass sound deeper. The sound quality also becomes much better. Don't I sound better? Thank you! Microwavable instant rice loves to fall over in the microwave, if you're me, that is. And like me, you've probably struggled with keeping the package upright. As it turns out, the flaps that fold out from the bottom create a nice sturdy base. Push them out and give it a try! Hey, why didn't I learn this in school? Has that half-finished 2-liter bottle of soda left over from pizza night gone flat? Rather than pouring it down the drain, add it to your compost heap. The sugar feeds good microorganisms and increases the acidity of the pile, helping organic material break down faster. Any pair of scissors will go blunt sooner or later, but don't let that stop you. There's a product in your kitchen that can help bring them back to life fast. Mm. Aluminum foil isn't just for leftover lasagna. Fold a sheet of it into quarters and start cutting. Cutting through the foil will sharpen those scissors right up, but not if they're too blunt. Rescue them while there's still time! Those little escalator brushes aren't there to clean your shoes, even though they can do a rather good job. These bristles are actually a serious safety feature. Without them, clothes, shoelaces, and bags can get caught in them when they're too close to the sides. The little brushes are also there to tickle you, to remind you to look down and take care. Hey, I always thought it was a bug rubbing up against me. Half belts. Seriously, what's up with those things? Well, some military jackets used to double as blankets, and the half belt helped keep the extra material from getting in the soldier's way. Nowadays, they're mostly used as a fashion accessory. Accidentally stapling the wrong pages together is like the worst thing ever. Well, there are worse things, but it's certainly annoying. Especially if the staple takes out a huge piece of your document with it when you try to pry it off. There's actually a simple way to make sure that the stapler pins are less tight and easier to pull out. Take a close look at that metal plate at the front of your stapler, known as the anvil. Turn the stapler upside down and adjust the settings. You're basically changing the stapler setting to temporary. No more tears, no more tears. Mention my name and you'll get a good seat. Toilet seat covers have been used wrong for way too long. I see you ripping off that flap that looks like a tongue. No, you're doing it all wrong. 
Instead of tearing it off, let the flap sit in the bowl after you put it down the cover. When you flush, the suction will pull on the flap and take it away. Aren't you glad you know that now? That dark square or rectangle at the end of your toothpaste tube? What does that mean? Is it color-coded to show what ingredients are in there? Or does it show whether the toothpaste is synthetic or natural? Well, sorry, but the truth isn't that exciting. The markings are there for the assembly machines. They help the machines know where to cut and fold each tube. We've all driven home from the supermarket, taken a right turn a little too hard, and crash! Sounds like the groceries volcano just erupted in the trunk. Look closely in the trunk. You might see some little hooks in there. You can hang your bags on them. Ooh. Yeah, some cars have them behind the front seats instead. You can use them to hang clothes or even your takeout bag. You may have noticed that members of the flight crew like to touch the overhead compartments while they're walking down the aisle. They don't have a weird desire to touch everything. There are actually handles along the edges to give them a better grip while walking. Go ahead and use them the next time you feel like a mid-air stroll. It's definitely better than grabbing onto everyone's headrests. Don't you hate that? A shiny brass doorknob adds just the right amount of fancy to your front door. But that's not all it does. Brass, like anything with copper alloy in it, has antimicrobial properties that many harmful germs and bacteria just can't stand. In high traffic areas, these brass knobs and handles are the perfect way to get rid of those nasty germs without having to use harsh chemicals all the time. The only downside is that brass is a lot more expensive than other metals. That might be why it's hardly used for this anymore. Does your toothbrush have a pattern of blue bristles weaved in with the white ones? It makes the toothbrush look a lot more stylish. But it's not just about looking good. Those bristles actually have a practical purpose. The blue dye is designed to wear off, around the same time as when you should replace your toothbrush. You should be switching out your toothbrush every 3-4 to months anyway. But those blue bristles are there to give you a gentle nudge, just in case you forget. Now, you walk over them every day and never think about it twice. But is there a reason maintenance hole covers are always round? In past civilizations, like ancient Rome, these covers used to be square-shaped slabs of stone. But all those edges and gaps led to plenty of stubbed toes and accidents for unsuspecting Romans. A round cover eliminated the problem. Plus, it meant you could only open it with a specialized tool. Probably a good idea. The thermos was invented by a Scottish scientist, but not for keeping his coffee warm. He just wanted to keep some chemicals at a stable temperature. He placed a small bottle inside of a larger one and then sucked all the air out from between the two bottles. The same technique is used to make the modern thermos. You can find a pincushion in just about every household. And strangely, it's always in the shape of a tomato. Ever wondered about that little strawberry dangling from the top? I'm no biologist, but I'm quite sure that strawberries don't grow on tomatoes. That little thing's for the needle you're currently using, so you don't lose it in that big pile you have. Stick deodorants go to waste when the casing starts rubbing against your skin, but there's still plenty left in there. Here's an easy trick to get it out. Unscrew the bottom and push it up from underneath. That'll give you a few more days at least. We all know about these little pockets on jeans where people used to keep their pocket watches. But what about these small metal buttons? They help hold the fabric together. Weavers put the buttons where the jeans can tear during moving and straining. These small holes on some backpacks were designed to tie extra gear to them. So you can pass ropes through them and tie sneakers if you don't want to keep them inside your backpack or in your hands. This tiny dot next to the camera on your iPhone is a microphone. It helps to get good quality of sound while taking a video. The spotlight feature on your Mac can be used not only for a quick search of files and apps. It also works as a calculator. Just type in a mathematical problem you need to solve. Spotlight also uses internal dictionary data. Enter any word in the search bar, and you can get information about it. You've just bought a new bottle of oil. You're taking off the lid and looking at this little cork that you can tear off by pulling the loop. Take this thing out, but don't throw it in the trash. Put it back in an upside-down position to control the pour's flow by pressing your finger against it. 
tiny ridges on the F and J keys on the keyboard help your fingers navigate during touch typing. When your index fingers are on these ridges, you know exactly where other letters are. The brushes on the sides of the escalators are not for polishing your shoes, but for your safety. These nylon bristles prevent your laces and clothes from getting inside the escalator's gears. Now, that wouldn't be good. Most door handles are made of brass. This type of metal is good for fighting microbes. Bacteria can't multiply that much on such surfaces. These public toilets' cubicles don't look private for a reason. Huge gaps at the bottom were created to make you want to get out of there as soon as possible. Thanks to this design, there are almost no cubes. You can use a plastic lid from soda cups as a coaster. It has the perfect shape to hold your drink and keep a table surface from getting wet. Don't turn the lid upside down. Just put it on the table the same way it was on the cup. If you're stuck in a car during an accident and can't open the doors, you can use bars from the detachable headrest to break the window and get out. Remember those small plastic discs under the bottle lids? This little thing helps preserve vacuum inside bottles, keeping soda in a fizzy state. You've probably watched food heating in a microwave at least once in your life. Exciting, I know! But why do the developers make the door so dark? This black film is necessary to block electromagnetic fields. Tiny dots on padlocks next to the keyhole are designed to dry out the moisture if water gets inside the lock. Also, if the lock gets jammed or starts to rust, you can pour oil into it through this hole to fix the problem. A golf ball is covered with tiny craters for good aerodynamics. They're called dimples, and this design helps the ball fly further and more evenly. Some mugs have a little groove at the outside of the bottom. It helps water flow out and prevents it from accumulating when the cup is in the dishwasher. Sunglasses were first used not to protect your eyes from the sun. They use such glasses during Arctic expeditions. A huge amount of snow can blind you just like a bright flash. To save their eyes, they came up with these unique glasses. You can use any t-shirt not only for dressing, but also as a protective layer for your luggage. Just put your clothes on your suitcase as a cover and don't waste time plastic wrapping it. A button on the back of the shirt collar is there to keep your tie under the collar. Yes, people don't use it as intended because all ties are thinner now. But this button is still there as a decorative function. And here's the initial purpose of a tie. They created it in the 17th century Europe to tighten the collar. This way, people protected their necks from a strong wind. Then, they got used to this part of the outfit and made it a must-have accessory for royal gatherings. Soft pom-poms on hats were first invented several centuries ago. Sailors used them to avoid hitting their heads against low ship ceilings and ledges. They make most clothes hangers from cedar wood, since it contains many natural oils repelling moths that love to eat your clothes. A light bulb is spherical because such a shape allows the light to distribute evenly. Also, such light bulbs are cheaper and easier to produce. Ever found these pieces of fabric and new clothes? They're not just patches, but also testing subjects to use before washing. You can put this piece in the washing machine and see what happens to it. If everything is fine, then you can safely put your clothes in. Your ceiling fan has two modes of work, winter and summer. You need to find the switch on it. Push it up to activate the winter mode and down for the summer one. In summer mode, the fan pushes the air down. It pulls the air up in winter. Most people have this round plunger in the bathroom. In movies, they use those to eliminate a blockage in the toilet. In fact, the plunger is to get rid of a blockage in the sink. For the toilet, you need another special device. The extra space under your oven is not for keeping pans and pots. You can put some dishes there. The heat of the stove will keep your meals warm. It's useful if you're waiting for friends late for dinner. <clears throat> you're taking a pack of popcorn out of a microwave after heating. See the little hole at the top of the popcorn bag? You can use it to get rid of small unpopped grains. Shake the pack over the plate and all the grains will fall out through the hole. Almost all people use a travel pillow incorrectly. 
Usually, they put two ends forward and lay their heads back. Try to turn the pillow on the other side. The arc should be under your chin, and the two ends should be directed back. Lay your head forward, and your neck will feel way more comfortable in this position. And you'll get a good nap. They create magnets in a horseshoe shape to increase their magnetic power. The blue part indicates the south pole, the red part the north one. The two poles work simultaneously and increase the attraction. Thanks to the perfect aviation design, most planes can fly a long distance even without an engine. In 1268, Roger Bacon made the first written mention on using telescope lenses for optical purposes. Magnifying lenses inserted in frames were popular for reading both in Europe and China at this time. So it's still a question if the West took it from the East or vice versa. If you find yourself in the middle of the sea without food, sorry, you can try fishing. You can use anything for bait, your phone, watch, keys, and you can use laces as a fishing line. Tie the bait and throw it into the water. And good luck catching the fish that swallowed your phone. It's going to be a whopper. You can turn over the tab on a lid of soda cans and use it to hold a cocktail straw in place. The blue half of the eraser wasn't originally created to delink the ink. Initially, the blue part erased inscriptions and drawings on thick paper. The red part couldn't do it without leaving streets, but the blue one handled this task perfectly. Most of us tear sticking notes off incorrectly. Try not to do it from below, but from the side along the licking lawn. The paper will stick to the wall for longer this way. Ever wondered what these two holes in the lollipop stick are for? All the time, you say. Well, when they put the bar in hot syrup, the liquid flows inside. It creates a solid attachment for the plastic. And so it goes. Most metallic zippers have a hidden lock inside them to save them from awkward situations, such as an undone fly. Don't leave the zipper handle in an upward position. When you pull it downwards, it automatically locks. It's all thanks to those tiny grooves hidden underneath the handle. Bath foam isn't only for fun or a nice smell. It also helps regulate the temperature. The bubbles keep the water hot, so you can enjoy a bath a bit longer. Anyway, it works for acrylic bathtubs only. Those made of metal lose heat really fast either way. Escalator brushes aren't for keeping your shoes clean and polished. It might be tough to apply wax right on that brush while the escalator's moving. It's for our safety. Brushes won't let you come close to the edge, so a long coat or boot-cut jeans won't end up in between the steps. Originally, golf balls were smooth. They have a dimpled surface now because players noticed that overused balls with damages flew better than brand new ones. At some point, manufacturers started producing balls with dimples. If you take a box of aluminum foil, you'll see tabs you can press on the side. They keep the foil straight and prevent it from rolling. It's also easier to tear off some amount of foil thanks to those tabs. Jerry cans have three handles for a reason. It's a smart designer move, so when you carry it alone, you use only the central handle to distribute the weight evenly. But your friend wants to help you out. Each of you grabs the side handle. Two flat prongs you can see on standard plugs used in North and Central America make sense. But how about those holes near the tips? Thanks to them, the outlet firmly grips the plug so that it won't loosen or fall out of the socket. It's sometimes irritating when you haven't used the entire stick of deodorant. There's a little bit more left, but it's hard to reach it. Okay, the trick is easy. Unscrew the bottom, take a pencil, and force it underneath that moving platform. That way, you'll push what's left of the deodorant out. There's a number put on the side of many cosmetic products. It isn't picked randomly. It tells you how long your product will last after you've opened it. This is why it has an open jar for a graphic symbol. A lint roller is good at removing those tiny fibers, but you can also use it to clean other stuff. For example, when you want to remove the dirt from the utensil tray in your dishwasher, simply take your sticky lint roller and put it into each compartment, and all the crumbs, dirt, and leftovers are all gone. Kings depicted on playing cards are real historical characters. Spades, King David. Clubs, Alexander the Great. Hearts, Charles the Great. Diamonds, Julius Caesar. Rings used to be more than a stylish accessory. The nobility used rings as a seal. 
archers wore rings to protect their fingers from bowstring injuries, while needlewomen from needle pricks. Detachable headrests in cars are all about safety. If you pull it out of a seat, you'll see two pretty sturdy bars. If you ever get locked or trapped in a car, you can get out of there smashing the window with these bars. A little arrow next to the refueling indicator on the car's dashboard indicates which side of the vehicle has fuel tank openings. It's useful when you need to refuel a rented car. You are probably using shampoo wrong all the time. Well, the main thing you should know is that you don't apply it directly on your hair. You gotta apply it onto the roots only. The foam that you make is enough to clean your hair. A button on the reverse side of a shirt collar is needed to hold a tie in place. Anyway, this button was designed for slim ties that are not that popular today, so this button is only an element of design. A cotton pads pack has those strings on it to hang it on some hook or holder. There's no need to untighten and tighten the pack again. Look at the bottom, it has a perforated line. Tear along it and just pull out a cotton pad from a hanging pack. It's a myth that the red side of the eraser is for pencil and the blue one is for ink. The blue gets rid of mistakes on thicker types of paper only. It works both for pencil and even ink, but make sure the paper is really thick. But that blue little thing can do so much more. It can polish your jewelry, clean your electronics. For example, the screen of your cell phone. You know those irritating sticker residues that won't peel off? Eraser helps there too. Same as with cleaning scuffed up suede or dirt you have on your walls. There's no need to tear one of its edges on stick sachets. The right way is to tear them down the middle. You say it's not a big difference, but at least there's less mess with those torn paper bits. A small V patch at the bottom of the collar helps put on the sweater without losing any shape over time because it's made of a double layer of webbing material, just like waistbands and cuffs. To avoid spilling juice right onto your t-shirt, try pouring it from the other side of the carton. This way, it sloshes less and it's easier to control. To enjoy fresh and soft peanut butter, store it upside down. This way, the oils won't stay on the bottom all the time and distribute evenly in the jar. Yeah, you've heard before that a drawer beneath your oven is there for keeping the food warm if the guests are running late. Hey, you can also slow cook on lower temperatures in that drawer. Automatic lip liners and eye pencils sometimes have a sharpener installed in the package. The lid on the back part of the pencil doesn't only reveal the color. You can pull it out and sharpen up the product. Grocery cart loops help organize all the stuff in your cart better so you can enjoy your supermarket trip. You don't want to put your brand new fancy white jacket in a cart next to carrots and onions, huh? Fruit stickers know everything about your apple's past. A five-digit number where the first number is nine is a good sign. It's an organic product. A four-digit number starting with a three or four means it was conventionally farmed. If the number starts with an eight and there are five digits, it's best to leave it on the shelf. Metal buttons on jeans, also known as rivets, help make the pockets more durable when miners would fill them with heavy tools. They're still helpful today. Even if you don't store anything heavy in your pockets, rivets strengthen the seams and make your jeans last longer. All Tic Tac containers are designed to dispense one Tic Tac every time you open it. The lid has the same shape as the candy. Turn the container upside down, gently shake it and slowly open it. You'll notice only one candy stuck between those lid grooves. So if you just open the container and shake it until five or even more candies fall into your mouth, it means you've been eating Tic Tacs wrong all this time. Next time you're getting ready for work, take a closer look at your go-to shirt. Every buttonhole is stitched vertically, but check out the very last hole. It's stitched horizontally, right? This is because the bottom part of your shirt endures the most stress from pulling, as it's where your hips are. So that horizontal buttonhole isn't a mistake, it's put there to stop your shirt ripping as your hips move. That layer of bubbles that forms when you add bubble bath to your tub isn't just for fun. The bubbly layer also acts as insulation and keeps your bath warmer for longer. The pom-pom on top of your beanie wasn't put there as a fashion accessory. The pom-pom was originally added to the hat to prevent sailors banging their heads on the ceilings of the ships that were too low. Crackers have holes in them to stop them cracking and breaking during baking. If the holes weren't there, steam would build up inside the cracker and make it collapse. Those numbers on stickers they put on oranges aren't random. 
If there are four digits and the first is three or four, this means the fruit has been made with conventional farming techniques. Five numbers beginning with an eight means the fruit has been genetically modified. Five numbers beginning with a nine means the fruit is organic. Margins on paper aren't for writing in dates and numbering lists. They were originally added to serve a protective function. Back in the day, rats used to be a pesky problem in people's homes, and paper was one of their favorite snacks. Margins were added as a safeguard, so that the rats would nibble on blank paper rather than taking a bite out of your important work. If you put your Chinese takeout on a plate when it arrives, you're doing more work than you should. Much like the paper condiment pots in fast food restaurants, your cardboard Chinese takeout box can be unfolded to create the perfect size plate for your food. The long neck on your soda bottle is designed like that to encourage you to hold it there. That way, the heat from your hand will only warm that top bit of the bottle instead of heating up your whole drink. Why does a lapel have a buttonhole with no matching button? Originally, coats and jackets did have a corresponding button so that the wearer could turn up the collar and fasten it around the neck to keep warm. Over time, people stopped doing this, and the button was removed. But many suit makers still keep the non-functioning traditional buttonhole. It's always hard to see your food in the microwave because of that pesky black grate on the window. But it's there to stop harmful microwaves escaping called the Faraday Shield. It protects you as well as ensures that your food cooks properly. That random diamond on your backpack is called a lash tab or a pig snout. It's there so you can thread cords through the holes to carry extra gear. Perfect for camping or long hikes. Golf balls are covered in dimples, rather than being perfectly round, so that the ball can fly through the air more smoothly, decreasing the drag and allowing it to travel further and faster. Your makeup pads have two different sides for a reason. The bumpy side is used for applying makeup, while the flat side is for removing it. Donuts have holes so that the inside and outside cook evenly. Before the holes were added, the inside would often be greasy and doughy, while the outside was crisp. Your Apple laptop charger has tiny legs that can be folded out, and they're not there so your charger can stand up. These legs, when unfolded, allow you to wrap the cable around and then clamp it into place, securing it and preventing the cable getting tangled or damaged. Now take a look at a soda bottle, and you'll notice a disc inside the bottle cap. This helps seal in the liquid and the drink's fizz, stopping it from going flat. That hole in your hollow lollipop stick isn't to prevent choking, should it ever be swallowed. It's actually there to keep the candy in place. Excess candy flows into the hollow tube and the hole, which, when it hardens, keeps the pop in place. If it was a smooth stick, the candy would slide off easily. The zipper on leather biker jackets is often sewn diagonally. It's not just a fashion statement. Zips that are stitched vertically can bunch up if the wearer leans forward, but a diagonal zipper won't. That little triangle on your gas gauge is there to let you know which side of the car your gas cap is on. Now, you'll never pull up to the wrong side of the pump in a rental car again. Vacuums come with so many attachments, but do any of us really know what that one with long bristles is for? It's for dusting and is perfect for cleaning framed art, blinds, and lampshades. Those tiny holes in the chocolate box tray actually serve a function. Push the hole near the candy and it'll pop straight out with you having to get your hands dirty. How thoughtful! Some skyscrapers have hollow floors that can contain nothing but an elevator. It's actually a way to get around height limits. Some skyscrapers are given a limit to the number of floors they can have. Because the hollow floors are empty, they add to the height of the building and make it look more impressive without increasing the number of floors and breaking the building contract. These hollow floors also help to prevent the spread of fires. Women's shirt buttons are traditionally on the left for a reason. Back in the day, it was a sign of wealth, as it signified that a chambermaid had dressed you, as having the buttons on the left made it easier for them to do up the shirt. Your cuticles serve a purpose, so think before you get rid of them. The small area of skin is there to protect your nails from infection. Without it, bacteria and fungi can get in. What's the difference between a wooden hanger and a plastic one? Aside from helping keep your clothes in shape, Cedarwood hangers also repel moths and bugs. 
If you look closely at an elevator door, you'll notice a tiny hole. This is actually a keyhole used for emergencies or for routine maintenance checks. Those random buttons dotted across your jeans are called rivets and are placed in the weakest spots of the jeans to protect them from ripping due to strain or movement. The Statue of Liberty's crown has seven points for a reason. They represent the seven seas and seven continents and were added so that she could extend her freedom to everyone on Earth. Suitcases often come with two zippers so that you can connect them with a padlock to prevent theft. Salt isn't just used for cooking. It can get rid of tough smells. Rubbing salt on your fingertips after chopping garlic should remove the smell. It also works on shoes. If you're in a hurry to get somewhere, but your phone is low on charge, switch it to airplane mode while it's plugged in. It'll charge much faster. Men's shirts have a loop on the back so that they can be hung on a hook in a dressing room or a locker room without creasing. Vaseline has a hidden purpose. It's great for removing scuffs from patent leather shoes. It'll also shine them. Trunks have an emergency latch if you ever accidentally lock yourself in, like I do. Don't ask me why. If you fumble around to locate it, all you have to do is pull on it and the trunk should open. Toasters have a secret slide in the bottom that can be removed so you can clean out all those annoying breadcrumbs. Take a look at your laptop keyboard. There are bumps on the F and J keys, but nowhere else. When your fingers are in the optimal typing position, your index finger should rest on these two keys. The bumps have been added so that you can correctly position your hands for typing without looking at your keyboard. If you happen to be missing your index fingers, perhaps from feeding sharks a little too closely, then you're out of luck. There's nothing better than a nice piece of buttered toast for breakfast, if we're not counting hot fudge sundaes. But if you find it harder to spread out cold butter over your toast, here's an idea. Use a cheese grater. Figure out the amount you need and grate the product. The process will also soften the butter, making it easier to spread, and you won't have to melt a too large amount of it in the process. But still, that hot fudge. Dried pasta comes in all sorts of different shapes and sizes for a reason. That's because each type of pasta goes best with a particular sauce. Pasta shells, for example, are perfect with denser and chunkier sauces. Why? because the sauce gets inside the shells, making it easier to serve and eat the dish. The ribbed outer surface also helps with covering the shells in the sauce. If you ever end up burning your cookies, ow! you can save them with your trusty grater, too. Just grate off the blackened parts after carefully taking the cookies from the baking tray. But be careful and wait until the cookies have cooled down. Also, if you ruin their shape a bit, you can always dip them in some melted chocolate. Ooh. After the chocolate cools down, you'll have perfectly shaped cookies. Although, after it gets past your lips and beyond, does the shape of the cookie actually matter? Mm, just saying. If you like adding a lot of ingredients to your sandwiches, but don't really appreciate it when the bread gets soggy, there is a way to reduce the amount of moisture. Pick your sliced tomatoes or cucumbers and place them between two paper towels for up to 5 minutes. After that, you can use them. Also, make sure to spread butter, cheese, or sauces, like mayo or ketchup, onto the bread first. This will help you seal the bread and keep moisture at bay. Some people think that the little white string that you find near an egg yolk needs to be removed before you cook the egg. Well, I'm here to tell you that these strands are called calaza, and you don't actually need to get rid of them. They help keep the yolk in place at the egg center. A calaza is not going to mess up the consistency or the taste of your food, so removing it is completely up to you. Ever notice that most juice boxes come with two flaps, one on each side? Those are actually handles. Manufacturers design the boxes this way to make it easier for us to hold them. This way, we don't end up squeezing the box, making the juice spill out. Now, you don't need to be a baking pro to know that you can use both white and brown sugar in your recipes. But have you ever wondered what the difference between these two is? It turns out that the only thing that sets them apart is that, during production, a small amount of molasses is added to the brown sugar. Molasses is basically a sort of syrup you get when processing sugarcane. 
It's usually removed during the refining process. That's how white sugar is produced. But if some amount of molasses remains in the final product, we end up with brown sugar, with its specific taste and darker hue. It's a good thing. There are a lot of things you can put in your dishwasher apart from your dishes. For example, you can clean such things as your silicone oven mitts or the knobs of some kitchen appliances, like your oven or stove. Some kitchen sponges and reusable towels may be safe to clean in the dishwasher as well. Speaking of kitchen cleaning products, there are a lot of things you can do with dish soap, like degriming your patio furniture. Just add a bit of dish detergent to some warm water and use the solution to wipe down your outdoor furniture with a piece of cloth. Finally, rinse it clean using your garden hose. You can also use dish soap to get rid of greasy stains on your clothes. Be it pasta sauce or salad dressings, hey, sometimes we miss our mouths! So, just apply a little dish detergent to the stain and then rinse with water. Use non-colored soap for lighter clothes. For more difficult stains, let the dish soap sink in for a bit, then throw the piece of clothing in the washer as usual. And think about maybe getting a bib. If none of the methods have helped you organize your closet, and you're still overwhelmed with large piles of clothes, there's a simple way that might be effective. It's called the one-in-one-out rule. That means for every new piece of clothing you buy, you need to get rid of one you already have. That means you'll always be decluttering your space. To make it easier to find something in your closet, good luck! Keep your most used items at eye level. This way they'll be easier to find and pull out when you're in a hurry. Those items that you tend to use less often, like your evening clothes for example, can stay on the shelves above or below your eye level. You can make good use of old spice tins. If you glue some powerful magnets to the inside of the tins, they can double as magnetic shelves. You can use them for all sorts of everyday items, like kitchen pliers, ice cream scoops, mm, or even cutlery. You can also place them on any metallic surface, like your refrigerator door. They'll blend in nicely with your kitchen magnets. Hidden in your laundry room, there's a great tool for picking up pet hair. It sometimes works better than lint rollers. Take a dryer sheet and, using some elbow grease, you'll get rid of that dog or cat hair in no time. It works on all sorts of surfaces, but it's especially effective for upholstered furniture. Now, if you don't like it when a door starts squeaking whenever you enter a room, get a bar of soap and rub it straight on the hinges. This will only help for a while, though, but it'll do the trick until you manage to get to a hardware store. And, you know, buy some oil. Have you ever noticed that in some elevators, there's a star next to the number of a specific floor? No, it's not to indicate where my office is. (laughs) It's there to point out where the nearest exit is. And it's not always on the first floor. It's most likely located on the floor closest to the street. Have you ever wondered why stop signs are red? Well, back in the day, they didn't actually have any particular color at all. Before the 1920s, they didn't even have a standardized shape. In 1922, though, someone came up with the octagon. But initially, it was painted yellow. All because the red coloring tended to fade out too quickly because of sun exposure. So yellow turned out to be the best option. It took another 30 years for fade-resistant enamel paint to be invented. We ended up changing the color of the stop sign back to red. After all, it's still the best color if you want something to be easily noticeable. Do you know there's a type of rose that can grow taller than people? According to the Guinness Book of World Records, the tallest rose bush ever found grew in Vienna, Austria. It was a staggering 28 and a half feet tall. Yes, it arose to a great height. In the same way we all have unique patterns on our fingerprints, no two tigers have the same set of stripes. It makes it easier for people working with this feline species to distinguish one tiger from another. I'll bet you didn't know the White House has its own flower shop hidden in the basement of the building. It's supposed to provide flower arrangements for all sorts of events that take place there. It's probably no surprise that pizza has become an American staple dish despite its Italian origin. People in the U.S. love it so much that they buy 350 slices of pizza every second in the States. Man, I'm not getting my fair share. 
To manage the huge demand for this delicious dish, around 17% of all restaurants in the U.S. are pizzerias. Finally, there's a way to make lemon juice without the seeds getting into your beverage. Try cutting the fruit in two and squeezing it with a pair of kitchen tongs. The pointed end of the lemon should be facing down. The juice will flow down, but the seeds will remain inside the lemon. Ooh, lemonade. It goes well with pizza. Have you ever stopped to think about the thrilling secrets of day-to-day modern life on planet Earth? I'm talking about tiny windows and washing machines and little holes in airplane windows. If you haven't got a clue of what I'm talking about, tag along and allow yourself to be as surprised as I was when I found out. Remember the drawer at the bottom of your oven? Maybe you've been ignoring it all along or using it to store pots and pans. Well, even though it can serve this function, that's not the only thing it's there for. The best way to use the bottom drawer is to keep your meal heated while you're waiting to serve it. Genius, right? Talking about secret doors, have you noticed that most washing machines have little flap doors at the bottom too? These doors actually serve as drain traps. It's where all the items that we put to wash together with our jeans and jackets go to. It's a type of collector, let's say, of small items. It stops them from getting into the main drain pipes and clogging them. It saves us hundreds of dollars in repairs each month. Now, who hasn't gone through the confusing task of having to measure how much pasta to cook for one serving? Well, here's the solution. The holes in the center of pasta spoons. They were actually made for measuring the exact amount of dry pasta you need for one serving. If you try stuffing wet cooked pasta through it, well, good luck with that. On a similar topic, have you ever wondered why pen caps have holes in them? Maybe you thought it was a design feature to regulate air pressure. But in reality, these holes have a much simpler and more important function – to reduce the risk of choking. Now, lots of people love to bite on their caps, and this tiny hole prevents them from choking in case they accidentally swallow a cap and it gets stuck in their throat. For kitchen lovers, there's a hidden secret right in front of your eyes that can change your life. Think pans. Now think handles. Right, they have holes in them. As it turns out, these holes were designed to hold the spoon you're using for cooking. And instead of dripping sauce all over the stove or your kitchen floor, you can place the spoon in the hole and let it drip the sauce directly back into the pan. Woohoo! Speaking of everyday items, and I was, most doorknobs are made of brass because this material makes them naturally germ free. Unlike plastic ones, brass doorknobs are kind of magical. They can disinfect themselves without you having to clean them. Neat, right? Have you ever noticed that at the bottom of a measuring tape, there is a little dip? You can find it in that metallic part you need to pull on to measure something. Well, that dip is actually the exact size of a regular nail. It was designed for people to place the tape on top of a nail and use it as a support while they stretch the tape. Well, I can't wait to try it out for myself. As for the margins in your notebook, They were invented to protect people's notes from mice. No, the mice weren't copying your answers for the math quiz. Actually, there were times when people had to cohabitate with rats and mice that often chewed on paper. So, to prevent information from getting completely lost, people created margins. This way, texts were moved closer to the middle of pages and remained unharmed by rodents. Hmm, perhaps this is where to digest information came from. And what about those tiny holes at the bottom of airplane windows? They have an extremely important function of regulating the air pressure inside the cabin. In other words, they help planes fly high up in the sky. Big responsibility, right? By the way, tray tables on an airplane are the germiest places inside the entire cabin. Studies showed that the trays had eight times the amount of germs on the toilet flush button. Now, how about we cut a commercial airplane in half 
and see what's inside. Well, it would look more or less like this. Rows of seats on top and everything else that needs to be stored at the bottom. I'm talking about passengers' luggage, emergency supplies, parts of the wing system, and so on. Moving on to bowling balls. Yes, I know it's a clumsy transition. Anyway, have you ever wondered what the insides of a bowling ball look like? If you have cut a professional ball in two, you'll see a familiar shape. Look closely, do you see it? Doesn't that look like the logo of Brightside? Anyway, professional bowling balls are different from the ones in your local bowling alley. That's because they're designed to make fancy moves. They actually have some really complex engineering inside. They're shaped to help skilled professionals get more strikes. The weight of professional bowling balls is designed to be projected inward as they travel down the bowling lane. This makes it harder for them to get into the gutters on the sides of the lane. Speaking of balls, let's take a look inside a baseball. To make it light and aerodynamic, producers use several different layers. Starting from the core, we have a cork center enveloped by black rubber. Then there's a layer of red rubber, followed by two or three alternating layers of wool yarn. After that, there's a visible white leather cover and that beautiful red seam on the side, stitching it all together. And what if you had x-ray vision and managed to look inside a human bone? Ooh, spooky! I'd say what calls most attention is this spiderweb-like situation at the center of the bone. In reality, it's a highly condensed and complex structure of nerves that you have inside your bones. Aren't you lucky? Now, I've got a riddle for you. What is round can be found near the ocean and looks like an aerial view of the Guggenheim Museum in New York City, the one that's made almost entirely of ramps. If you said a nautilus shell, hey, then you guessed right. A nautilus is a shellfish whose house you can find in countless souvenir stores near the beach. It's made up of two layers, a matte white outer layer and an iridescent white inner layer. And if you were to cut it in half, it would look very similar to the insides of the Guggenheim Museum. Aloe leaves are good for healing purposes and also for hydration. But if you manage to look inside of an aloe leaf, the image you'd see would be satisfying and very relaxing. Who hasn't dreamed of a pool filled with jelly? Now, there seems to be nothing more mundane and regular than a tube of toothpaste. But you wouldn't think so if you cut open a tube that contains several colors. Now, there have been speculations that the insides of such a toothpaste tube might be divided by barriers so that the stripes don't mix. But if you cut it in half, you'll see that it has only one interior chamber. As it happens, there's a lot of science behind the making of striped toothpaste. According to a specialist, they have to ensure that the paste in all the stripes has the same physical properties. This way, the colors are naturally prevented from mixing with one another. That's why, if you tear a tube open, you'll see something that looks like several slices of pizza in different colors. If you open your closet, you're bound to find at least a few wooden hangers. Usually, they're made of cedar wood, which is a natural moth repellent. So, cedar hangers actually protect your clothes from moth infestation. For some people, more than others, eyeliner is an everyday must. Boy, isn't it! But did you know that back in ancient Egyptian times, both men and women used coal eyeliners to protect their eyes from the sun's glare? Way to go for the Egyptians for figuring that out! Now, if I could just learn to walk like one… Normally, we use headrests for the purpose of, well, resting our heads, right? Well, not only. As it turns out, headrests can be easily removed from the seats and used to break car windows in case of emergencies. Now, this one is a trick very few people know about. You probably place your doormat horizontally, like most of us do. But doormats serve the purpose of absorbing dirt from the soles of your shoes before you enter your home. So, for this function to work as it's meant to, the best way to place a doormat is vertically. 
This way, you take more steps on the top of the doormat before entering your house. And last but not least, now I don't want to be accusatory here, but you have probably been vacuuming your house the wrong way, and I can prove it. Most people just vacuum floors and carpets in one direction or move the brush back and forth several times, thinking they've got all the dust out. But according to cleaning professionals, the best way to vacuum is in rows. First, you go forward with the brush until you arrive at the end of the row. Then, you fluff the carpet up and move back down along the same row, gathering the dust that wasn't collected in the first sweep. Talk about efficient cleaning! On the other hand, my idea of house cleaning is to sweep the room with a glance. Hey, I don't want to disturb that protective layer of dust. Many airports have carpets at their gate areas. This nicety usually comes with a few other perks. Lower ceilings, comfortable seats, and pleasant natural lighting. All this costs more for airports, and carpets are not so easy to clean as hard floors are. But they create a cozy feeling for passengers waiting for their flight, making them more relaxed. Still, it isn't a gesture of goodwill on the part of airports. According to social research, calm passengers are about 7-10% to more likely to go window shopping and actually buy something in the lounge area or duty-free zone. So, by investing in the passenger's comfort, airports actually increase their own income. If you ever wanted to know what happened to your baggage while you're on board a plane, the short answer is that airport staff don't actually know once it leaves their territory, and they probably really don't care. Sorry. Baggage is sorted automatically. Scanners scan the barcode and sort the baggage according to its destination. The three main tasks of airport baggage handlers are to move your bags from the check-in area to the gate, to move them from one gate to another when you have a connection, and to move your bags from the plane to the baggage claim area. And that's it! So if your luggage doesn't move fast enough, it can be late for your connecting flight, or the exact opposite. Your bag gets to your destination before you do because you're stuck at passport control. Another problem can arise if you forget to tear off any old stickers showing a different destination. In this case, the scanner might send your luggage to the wrong country. Most airports are equipped with giant kitchens where the food for passengers is prepared. These kitchens usually cook food for different airlines at once. And since that oh-so-delightful airplane food must be cooked for about 6-10 to 10 hours in advance, these kitchens have to work 24-7. And however surprising it might sound, the menu for your flight is developed up to a year in advance. This is a common practice for most airlines because every single ingredient matters and adds to expenses. In fact, one airline managed to save $40,000 after they removed just one olive from every salad they served on their flights. Airport staff sometimes ask passengers to rub their hands on a piece of cloth before putting it into a special machine. It might seem kind of scary, but it's actually harmless. You're simply being checked by a machine called an atomizer. Before their working day starts, employees put samples of dangerous chemicals into the machine. The machine memorizes these smells, and in case a person's hand smells like those chemicals, it alerts airport staff to this danger. You know how it sometimes goes. You come to the security checkpoint, and suddenly, it turns out you have something prohibited to take on board in your carry-on. But don't worry. All the things seized during the pre-flight inspection can be stored at the airport for as long as three months. On top of that, you have an opportunity to mail them any address inside the country. Things taken away by security and weren't claimed can also get sold at special auctions and are delivered worldwide. If you have a long layover between flights, going to the nearest hotel to rest might not be the cheapest option. There's a much better trick. Check if the airport or airline sells 24-hour access to the VIP lounge zone. In most cases, you can have free snacks and drinks there and use free shower cabins and rooms for rest at a very affordable price. In multi-terminal airports, search for underground passageways connecting terminals that most people might not know about. For example, at Frankfurt Airport in Germany, there's a walking tunnel between Terminal 1 and Terminal 2 that's mostly used by employees since passengers are simply unaware of its existence. There's an actual term for the first 60 minutes after you clear check-in. The golden hour. It's the time that passengers statistically spend more money in retail and duty-free areas of the airport. 
And having the most comfortable seats in those areas right in front of the shops is a clever trick to lure you in for shopping. Let's admit, sitting in front of a comfy chair while looking at a flashy sign or shopping window can be tempting. And that's exactly what the airports want you to feel. If your flight is overbooked and you can't fly at the designated time, don't hurry to accept the first voucher you're offered as an apology. Normally, airlines keep raising the stakes until they have enough volunteers to give up their flight seats. And if they don't and you've been bumped in voluntarily, you can insist on a cash refund instead. Depending on your ticket price and the time of your delay, you might be entitled to as much as $1,300. Most airports have specific experts called profilers. These people practice what's called SPOT, or the Screening Passengers by Observation Technique. They carefully analyze facial expressions, gestures, and behavior in order to detect suspicious people. Their job is to notice the nonverbal signs of anxiety, such as people licking their lips, itching, or looking around a lot. If a profiler notices a person acting in a weird or off way, they can invite them for an inspection, where they can talk to a person to find out more about them. Profilers work in both the main halls and in passport control. The typical question they ask is, what's the purpose of your visit? Then they check the person's reaction to this inquiry. No matter how reserved a passenger is, if they have something to hide, TSA officers will find out, thanks to the tiniest cues in people's behavior. Before your luggage even gets on the plane, it goes through five security levels, and one of them, besides scanning the contents, includes being checked by a special dog that can sniff out dangerous chemicals. It's a well-known fact that a dog's nose is much stronger than that of any human. In fact, dogs distinguish smells from 10,000 to 100,000 times better than people do. No wonder airports take advantage of this super sense for security and regularly use these sniffer dogs to detect suspicious substances. What's really cool is that you can't even distinguish a detection dog from its civilian siblings. Unlike police dogs, the ones working at airports aren't trained to frighten or intimidate people. The most popular sniffer breeds are Golden Retrievers, Labs, and German Short-Haired Pointers. Charging your phone at a specifically designated spot can look convenient, but it's not really safe. If the charging station only allows you to plug in your cord, you might get malware installed on your phone with you none the wiser. The only safe way to charge your phone or tablet is to find an electric socket and use it with your own charger. Same goes for free airport Wi-Fi, apart from the airports requiring you to authenticate yourself more often than not. Someone can easily access your data while you're using an unprotected Wi-Fi hotspot. It's safer to use your mobile data, but if you absolutely have to use the airport's Wi-Fi, best clear or encrypt all your important data on your device. It might be exasperating to take your laptop out of your carry-on at the security check every single time. But the airport staff need to have a clear look at your device to make sure nothing is concealed inside. On the screen of an x-ray scanner, a laptop looks like a semi-transparent object with a clearly visible hard drive, CD drive, and whatnot. But security officers can't see what's behind some of those parts. For example, a dense and rather large battery. People tend to choose the closest security line to them. If that line turns out to be super crowded, just look around after ID and ticket check. You may see another checkpoint with much fewer people. Some checkpoints at the airport are situated at the far edges of the terminal, and that's why passengers fail to notice them. Applying for a TSA pre-check can be a great time saver for traveling in and out of the U.S. Being a member of this program has some great perks. First, getting through security and passport control happens faster. If you're a pre-check traveler, you won't have to take off your shoes or remove your belt, and forget about placing your stuff like liquids and laptops in special bins. If you aren't flying to or from the U.S., then you can look up similar services available in your country. If you're flying economy class but don't like it, who does? Check in online and check out the seating options about four days before your flight. It's about that time that airlines typically start upgrading seats, and you might get an upgrade to business class for a small fee or even sometimes for free. You can also ask for an upgrade when you're already at the airport. Most people forget about this opportunity or simply don't care, so you might just get lucky. Airports are some of the most visited and, at the same time, mysterious places out there. 
So, let's see what's going on behind the scenes and what secrets airports hide. At some airports, there are special people called profilers. Such people bring to life a special program called SPOT, Screening Passengers by Observation Technique. They analyze your mimics, gestures, and behavior in order to detect suspicious people. Their job is to notice nonverbal signs of anxiety, people licking their lips, itching, or looking around a lot. If a profiler notices a person acting in an unusual way, they can invite them for an inspection. There, they talk to this person trying to find out more about them and confirm, or not, their suspicions. Airport agents might also be watching you all the way from the security check to your gate. Some airports have facial recognition scanners that can easily track you. They're equipped with special software that compares passengers' faces with their IDs. Keep in mind that if you don't charge your laptop before the flight, it may be confiscated. It's not uncommon for an airport security officer to ask you to power your device up. If you fail to do it, your gadget can be taken away for an additional check. For safety reasons, it's crucial to make sure that it hasn't been tampered with or modified in a way that can cause harm during the flight. Packing an electric brush in your check-in luggage may land you in trouble. Brushes produced by some brands have lithium batteries inside, and those can potentially lead to serious problems in the air. That's why leaving your electric brush in your check suitcase isn't an option. But you're allowed to store them in your carry-on bag. At the same time, if your device runs on AA batteries, you can put it wherever you want. Anyone who's ever traveled by plane knows about the no liquids rule, but not everybody knows that this rule also applies to peanut butter, toothpaste, creams, lotions, liquid makeup, lava lamps, snow globes, some kinds of medications, deodorant, and even gel shoe inserts. Now, let's go outside for a while and look at those landing spots. Airports charge airline companies huge fees for landing on their runways on certain days and at particular times. But the most interesting thing is that the landing spots can be bought and sold. For example, in 2016, Oman Air paid Air France around $75 million for one early morning arrival slot at London Heathrow Airport. You must have noticed that airfare has increased over the past decade. That's because of the extremely high prices of landing slots. Dispatchers don't only control the planes in the sky, as you can often see in the movies, but they also look after their movements on the ground. They also control the lighting on the runways. There's three types of air traffic controllers, en route, terminal, and tower. Each of these dispatchers has their own area of responsibility. One dispatcher has about five monitors, and the information on them is constantly changing since the monitors show weather conditions and information about other planes. You know how it sometimes goes. You come to a security checkpoint, and all of a sudden, it turns out you have something prohibited in your carry-on. But worry not, you still have a chance to save your favorite pen knife. At some airports, there are on-site postal services, and you might have an opportunity to mail your belongings to any address you provide. But the mailing fees are pretty high. Plus, certain items are prohibited, and the postal service won't deliver them. Airports can be selling your lost luggage right now. Of course, I don't say that there's no chance for you to get back your suitcases that's traveled to a different destination, but just as likely, you might not see it again. In this case, an airport has the right to sell your misplaced belongings at an auction. Most airports have an annual lost luggage sale. After paying an entry fee, you can bid on electronics, clothes, bags, and other stuff. While flying, you might have a celebrity on board, but you won't know it. Large airports have separate check-in and security procedures for celebrities. They often board the plane directly through a hidden door located beside the jet bridge. Some airlines also use cool cars to transfer VIP passengers from the terminal building to the plane. At the same time, most people come to the airport well ahead of time. And the most popular activity while waiting for a flight is wandering through the duty-free zone. And even though people rarely plan to buy anything there, 
different products end up in their shopping baskets. That's because lots of airports are designed in a special way that makes people feel relaxed and at ease. I'm talking about all those huge windows, a lot of light, massage chairs, and comfortable seating areas. And statistically, calm passengers are 10% more likely to spend money on retail, duty-free, and food. Designers put a lot of thought into airport layouts. It helps to ensure the smooth flow of travelers. And the main point here is easy navigation that can prevent people from getting lost. This is achieved through subtle but very effective design cues. And placing duty-free zones between security checkpoints and boarding gates is one of them. They supposedly help you relax after clearing security and lead you where you need to go. But speaking of food, a celebrity chef restaurant at the airport might not be as good as it would be if you were visiting the real thing. Not chefs themselves, but special restaurant companies are responsible for airport outlets. One of the reasons is the extremely strict security that surrounds airport deliveries, including food. You may still have a nice meal, but it won't be the same. Now, I'll tell you about one more way airports manipulate you into spending your money. They make you walk through the shiny duty-free stores straight after the security check. But the most curious thing is that the walkway through such stores usually veers to the left. That's done because most people are right-handed which means they use their right arm to pull their luggage and are more likely to look to the right while passing through the stores. And the duty-free zone veering to the left leaves more space on the right where passengers are more likely to look. Oh, and have you ever noticed how many mirrors there are at airports? Mirrors are strategically placed there to make airports appear larger and create an illusion of more space. This in turn helps to reduce the feeling of claustrophobia and makes the airport experience more comfortable for travelers. If you have an opportunity, don't exchange cash at the airport. You'll never get a good rate there. Those who didn't buy local currency in advance can instead order it online and collect it at the airport. Some services only need a few hours notice for such an order. Or it might even be better to use an ATM to withdraw some cash at your final destination. Now, have you ever paid attention to airport codes? The most often used are three-letter codes. Why this number? Back in the 1930s in the USA, pilots used the National Weather Service's two-letter city codes to refer to airports. But soon, the number of airports in the country outgrew the number of such codes. That's why airlines expanded this system by adding the third letter. It was usually X. That's how LA, Los Angeles, turned into LAX. But even though there shouldn't be two airports with the same code, some of these codes sound so similar you could easily mistake one for the other. For example, look at this airport with the code CGP in Bangladesh. And here we have CPG. It's the code of an airport in Argentina it's dangerously easy to fly to the wrong place. So pay attention. So get this, an extra hole at the upper part of the sink has multiple hidden functions. First, in case someone forgets to close the tap, the water won't overflow and the bathroom won't get flooded. Second, thanks to that hole, the water drains faster and it gives an escape for the air, helping the water flow down. Those two holes on a side of any Converse shoe are not only to let the stinky air out. Sure, breathability is important for any athlete. The second reason is that athletes lace through those holes to get a better grip. Donuts have a hole in the middle and it doesn't stand for O in donut. It's not designed for an easier grip either, though it can be quite convenient. It's actually made this way for mass baking so that they can cook all the way through evenly. Baby carrots are tiny and, unlike regular carrots, wet. Baby carrots aren't some special sort of carrots. They're actually made of regular carrots by cutting off the skin and outer layers and then polishing them to look that pretty. The problem is that they can't retain moisture. A regular carrot retains some water inside because of the layers that locks it in. Once they're chopped out, baby carrots can dry out easily, so they usually sell them in bags with some water inside. Toy stores are filled with Beanie Baby plush toys, and a detail that is even more iconic than their huge eyes is their tags saying T.Y. 
That's a small manufacturing company not so many people have heard of. Beanie Babies appeared in 1993, and they went insanely popular. TY is the name of the company, but it's not an abbreviation. It's the actual name of the company's founder, H. Ty Warner. Most metallic zippers have a hidden lock inside them to save you from awkward situations, such as an undone fly. Oh boy. Don't leave the zipper handle in an upward position. When you pull it downwards, it automatically locks. It's all thanks to those tiny grooves hidden underneath the handle. Almost any public toilet has a large gap between the floor and the door. The reason for such a zero privacy thing is to actually minimize the level of privacy and comfort so that people wouldn't stay there long and there'd be no lines. It's also easier to clean and safer if some emergency occurs. Headrests in a car are about comfort and detachable headrests are about safety. If you pull the headrest out of a seat, you'll see two bars, which are quite sturdy. If you ever get locked or trapped in a car, you can get out of there smashing the window with these bars. Many cups and mugs have little grooves on the bottom on purpose. They're designed for dishwashing machines. The grooves let the water flow and not spill over your feet when you take the cup out. Also, those grooves let the air flow, so the cup doesn't crack even if the tea is scalding. Almost all measuring tapes have a metal tip with a small slot on the end. You can use this slot to hang the tape on a nail or a screw to make measurements without anyone's help. Sometimes this tip has a row of sharp points along the edge on one side. That comes in handy when you want to leave a mark without using a pencil. Doorknobs are usually made of brass, bronze, and some other copper alloys for a reason. They have an antibacterial effect, so they stop microbes from spreading. They get rid of a range of harmful germs pretty fast, within a couple of hours. But don't forget to wash your hands anyway. Grocery carts have loops for a reason. You don't want to put your jacket in a cart next to potatoes and onions. Hang it on a loop. This little hook-like thing is there to help you better organize the space in your cart. The carts also have a super handy grid. Whenever the cart's full, you just need to lift the grid and attach the shopping basket for extra purchases. Placing it in between the horizontal bar above the wheels and the hooks the grid has. A point in an ointment cap is there for a reason too. Most tubes are usually sealed with foil, and it's better to avoid opening it with fingers unless you're ready to say goodbye to your nails. A point easily opens even the most safely sealed tube. Silica gel can often be found in different things you buy like bags, shoes, and many others. Don't throw it away. It's meant to absorb excess moisture, so anytime your shoes are a bit wet, just throw in a packet with silica gel. People used to co-live with rats, and these guys like gnawing on everything they see in their way, including paper. Still, rats weren't able to chew more than the space left on the margins. That black grate on a microwave isn't just some fancy decoration. It's called a Faraday shield, and it prevents the rays from escaping the microwave. It also speeds up the heating, so you can enjoy yesterday's leftovers faster. It may also block phone signals, so if you're tired of numerous calls, just put the phone into a microwave, but don't turn it on. All Tic Tac containers are designed to dispense one Tic Tac every time you open it. The lid has the same shape as the candy. Turn the container upside down, gently shake it, and open it slowly. You'll notice only one candy stuck between those lid grooves. So if you just open the container and shake it until five or even more candies fall into your mouth, it means you've been eating Tic Tacs wrong all this time. Those little holes in the airplane windows are designed to control the cabin pressure. They also protect the windows from fogging up as the temperatures drop and rise. By the way, the airplane window is round for a reason. This way, pressure is evenly distributed so it doesn't get deformed. Blue bristles on a toothbrush are actually an indicator that it's just about time to change the brush. As the bristles get in contact with water, the blue, or whatever other, pigment fades away. So the more you use it, the duller the color becomes. A triple handle on a jerry can is there to make it easier for two people to carry it and distribute the fuel evenly. Gas cans often have a second hole that actually needs to be uncapped too before you pour the gas. 
the air passage will prevent it from pouring out, so no more fuel waste. Jeans first appeared in 1873. They were invented by Jacob Davis and Levi Strauss. Davis was a tailor who was producing covers and tents, and Strauss was a businessman who, among other things, was selling cloth. The first jeans were made by Davis from denim, the fabric he bought from Levi Strauss and Co. Together, they patented the design. Blue was a standard color for denim that was dyed using an indigo dye. The blue color is a tradition that is still often followed today to replicate the original look of a pair of jeans. Jeans also have metal rivets, and they've been there from the very beginning. Jacob Davis, the man who made the first pair of jeans, added copper rivets to spots where pants were more likely to rip, flies, and pockets to make them stronger. Today, they have more of a decorative purpose since they're distinctive and traditional for jeans. Another special thing about jeans is those tiny pockets they have that seemingly serve no purpose. Well, maybe it's true now, but years ago, when many cowboys were wearing jeans, the pocket was made specifically to keep a pocket watch there. Also, back then, a pair of jeans had just four pockets. That tiny pocket, the watch pocket, two big pockets in front, and just one pocket on the back. Many zippers have the letters YKK engraved on them. It's an abbreviation that stands for the name of the company that can be translated as Yoshida Manufacturing Shareholding Company. This Japanese company is the largest zipper manufacturer in the world, so they put their initials on all the zippers they produce. That's around half of the zippers in the world. And that's why you see their zippers more often than any other zippers. Those little white golf balls have dimples all over them. It turns out they aren't there just randomly. At first, golfers were playing with a smooth ball. With time, the ball would get all punched and damaged, but also it would start to travel way further. The reason here is aerodynamics. Dimples allow the air to flow more smoothly around the ball, taking it further. So the idea was adopted and the balls got their dimples all around, allowing them to travel longer distances. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.